<clears throat> what is up everyone welcome back to card collects i'm nathan and today i've got a really exciting live stream i think planned where we'll be uh diving into star stock mainly but i've also got some viewer mail from sir charles thank you very much that i'm pretty excited about opening he sent it to me all the way from canada and a big announcement um i am opening the card collects community discord server tonight i will be dropping the discord link in the chat and we will uh kind of see how that goes to start out with at least i'm just going to be dropping links in the chat uh when i do live chats and then once we've got a whole, kind of a handle on things and got the kinks worked out then i might open it up to um to more to the public kind of so we'll see about that but hi ollie how are you thanks for being here um but yeah that's kind of the plan i i think i'm gonna go ahead and open sir charles's uh mail the the uh, package that he sent me here first and then uh I'll uh, actually here first. I'll just go ahead and drop the the link to the Discord. Y'all can check it out. Um, let me know what you think, and you know, get involved, kind of interact. That's what it's meant for. Is for, you know, I think everybody kind of finds this channel in their own way. And if you enjoy it, then you probably have something in common with other people that might enjoy it enough to get together and talk about things. So. Um, you might be able to build on each other's knowledge and it allows me and us to carry on a more long form discussion about cards, share videos and pictures and that type of thing. So I'm pretty excited about this, uh, about the Discord server. I hope that it grows into something um, more than just this channel and uh so let me let me get the link here. Let me go ahead and get the link. And then paste. Uh, give me just a second here. Got to drop an emoji in here. There we go. All right, that should enable. Thanks, Ollie. I will try. Uh, enable you access to the to the Discord. Like I said, check it out. See what you think, and um, we will. And we will kind of adjust that. And then, I'll, like I said, at some point in time, I might open that up to the public. But for right now, just going to keep it uh, with the community that drops into the live chat. And I'll drop the link in there. So thanks, everybody. Um, and so I think I think we'll get to the, uh, the mail opening. Pretty excited about this. Um, I did. Hold on here. Um. There we go. I did start to open it, and I was like, wait, we talked about maybe opening this on stream. So I put it back together, but it was pretty intriguing. So all the way from Canada, I did block out any personal information. Um, I try to do that on everything, and I uh, hope I keep it up. Ziggy No, what's up? How are you doing? I checked out your uh, daily this morning. Um, Ziggy No does a daily, uh, kind of like a daily sports card, um, vlog kind of, I mean a daily video, YouTube video on, uh, sports card news and, and different things. And he's a big, uh, he's big into star stock. So check that out everybody. Um, cause it's pretty interesting. Always something new. I, I don't keep up with the daily videos like there's a couple guys that do daily videos i don't keep up with them as much just because i'm really busy but i'm always interested like 
how people find all the information that they do. I mean, I know you kind of like you get into a groove of like you check out, you know, certain blogs and and sites and different things to kind of keep up with the news. But I've got my things I keep up with and, and that's about the best I can do. Um, but it is it is really interesting. Um, so this is what I met with to begin with a bunch of coolie cups. And there is a Royals one. So that is awesome. Pittsburgh Pirates, Arizona Diamondbacks, Oakland Athletics, and the Houston Astros. Oh yeah. Don't be don't be hating on the Astros now. Everybody in baseball was doing it. They all know they were. Shame on Mike Trout and Christian Yelich for coming out and trashing the Astros when they know as well as anybody, everybody in baseball was stealing signs. There's no way they weren't. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that right now. <laughs> of course, Ziggy, I, I, uh, I try to direct everybody. You know, uh, I mean, you get a lot of advice being a creator and stuff like that. And uh, the only way I think that I can keep a, uh, a loyal fan base is by providing value. And... Uh, a lot of times that means directing people to other content creators. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm not uh, the best person to ask. I mean, I've, I've got my own set of knowledge, but um, I kind of take pride in that because most people would say that's wrong, and I, I disagree. And I, I think my fan base appreciates it, that I'm willing to say, you know, maybe go, this person knows a lot about this n niche of the sports card hobby and different things. And, and so I really, I enjoy that. I, I'm, uh, just part, part of, part of how I look at it, but all right, sir, Charles, let's get back into this. I, <laughs> this is, this was like a heavy box and it was packed tightly. And I'm like, what is this? So here's this. And I, I don't know what it is, but we're gonna find out. It's got Slugger. This is Slugger. This is a Casey Royals mascot. And uh, don't feel bad if you don't know who Slugger is, because the Royals are just a really small market team, and that's what I love about them. But they get very little exposure. I mean, Kansas City is a town of about five hundred thousand people. If you take in Greater Kansas City, you might be looking at a million. But um, always been a small market team, always been, uh, and not just a small market team, but a small market team kind of in the middle of nowhere. Like, you've got the Cardinals in St. Louis, but the Midwest is not heavily populated like the East Coast is. So um, even on the East Coast, you might have a terrible team, but they get more exposure than the Royals if they were having a decent year. Because you've got like St. Louis, Chicago. Um, there's nothing in Tennessee or Kentucky, right? No. Uh, is there anything in Memphis? No, there's nothing in. No. So then, I mean, the closest would be like probably the Texas Rangers, the Colorado Rockies. That's crazy. That's true, though. Actually, like the Cleveland Indians, um, they would be kind of close, but yeah. It's uh, somewhat isolated. So, that is Slugger. You'll notice in the background here, that's a Slugger statue my brother-in-law got me for Christmas. Christmas. And I've got a bunch of Slugger stuff. A bunch of Royal stuff, so. Love that. Got some uh, dividers. Ooh! Check it out. I like Cassius Stanley. I really do. Guy's got hops. I thought maybe this was like a bunch of Royals cards, which would be cool, but this is cool too. Another Cassius Stanley. I like these. This is Jesse's like, Jesse loves Prism draft picks. Um, and I don't think he's wrong. Like these college jersey cards, Josh Green, I've got a, a big Josh Green card that I pulled. Um, these college jersey cards, they, they get hated on when they come out. But then like if somebody blows up, they're pretty good. You can always pick them up cheap. That's cool. Ooh, nice. 
Nice. I like Marquee too. This this design basically hasn't changed since like 2012. They had Marquee in 2012, I think. Joel Embiid, T minus three, two, one. I like it. Dame Lillard, Fantasy Stars. Dame was a good pick. I had Dame in my last basketball picks, which was back in December, and it was a pretty good pick. Connor, I-44, longest interstate in the entire world, driven from Chicago to Dallas too many times. Missouri, I-44, over 300 miles. What's up, Nathan and chat? What is up, Connor? Kyrie Irving, Express Lane. That's a cool insert. I like the inserts. They don't get a lot of love either, but I like them. Especially the chrome inserts. And if you look, like one of the things I've been watching lately is King Griffey Jr. Tops Chrome Refractors um, from like the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, and I think 2010 was like his last year and it's, he went back to the Mariners. That might be a sleeper. Um, but a lot of his chrome, chromium inserts from the late nineties have been going up big time, big time. PJ Washington Jr. Prestige. That's awesome. And some rolls. Josh Stallmont. Jorge Soler. Jorge Soler rakes. Bubba Starling, okay, if you don't know, which most of you probably don't know, Bubba Starling was like number one draft pick, um, huge prospect coming out of high school, five-star player, and took him forever, forever to get up. Um, let's see here. Bubba Starling drafted number one in June 2011. All right, that's how long it's taken him to make it. Oh, yeah, he's 28. He's 28. Gosh, we were so psyched about him, too. Salvador Perez. Maybe a Hall of Fame catcher. Salvador Perez has got a shot at, at uh, being a Hall of Fame catcher. Brady McConnell and a camo. Dude, this is awesome. Kyle Isbell Mojo. Alberto Mondesi. I think he's Raul Mondesi's son. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm pretty pretty sure he is. Salvador Perez. When I when my dad was alive, he could. This is awesome. Thank you, Sir Charles. We, when my dad was alive, <clears throat> there's this one instance. My dad started playing uh, rotisserie baseball, which is like. The, the very earliest form of fantasy baseball, when it first started, like he's probably one of the first people to ever play fantasy baseball. <laughs> but um, in the early 80s, if not the late 70s, uh, my mom tells a story about how one night he came home with this like board because there was things that went along with it back then. Uh, I don't know all about it, but, and she's like, they used to play a lot of board games back then because it was the eighties. Like, what in the hell else are you? <laughs> what else are you gonna do? You know, that's well, people played a lot of boy board games, especially you know single people or married people, young married people, and stuff like that. Get together with their friends, play board games. So my dad comes home with this thing that looks like a board game, and she's like, "Oh, you got this new game?" And he's like, <laughs> "He's like, no, this is this is not a game. <laughs> like, this is rotisserie baseball." <laughs> But for real, like that was the beginning of fantasy baseball. And, you know, now it's huge, you know. But I would say at the time my dad got into fantasy, rotisserie, fantasy baseball, whatever, like you probably had very, very few people playing it. Because it was very, it was very involved. And my dad did it his whole life. I mean, he, he did it, he passed in 2013. So, um, up until he got sick, my dad passed leukemia, but up until he got sick, uh, yeah, they would get together like once or twice a year, they would draft teams and then they would have awards. And of course there was fewer guys that did it later on into the two thousands and stuff, but it was, it's really interesting. But anyways, a friend of mine played college ball at a small college in St. Louis and a friend of his went on to play um, 
minor league ball. And he said his name, didn't even say who he played for or anything. And my dad's like, oh, yeah, like he plays for Double A Omaha for the, in the Royals farm system. <laughs> it wasn't like a big name. It was just my dad had a very in-depth knowledge of Royals baseball. I do not, but I still like, I probably have a better understanding of Royals baseball than most people, but, but that's, that's not necessarily saying a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> all right. And there's more, but wait, there's more, there's more. Got some, got some thick boys, some thick card loaders here. I I love this because I I mean, you really you really put some thought into this, sir. Sir Charles. Then this is the stuff like. Like, this is the stuff that I would say is more important to me. Like, we've been through this before. Like, what's your most expensive card or anything like that? And it's pretty easy for me to make money in sports cards because I don't really... Like, that's not necessarily what I'm after. Is like, the really, like, fancy popular... Like, really expensive cards. Like, most of the cards that I'm... I, uh... Most of the cards that I really value probably don't have any monetary value which makes it easier for me but anyways it's really cool all right we've got oh a patch signature hunter renfro wow freshman fabric sir 2019 certified hunter renfro that is a sick patch out of 99 33 of 99 Patch Auto. Wow, dude. Thank you. Player worn. Autograph guaranteed by Panini America. That is so cool. That is a really cool patch. I don't have... Even though it's like... The Chiefs arch rival. The Oakland Raiders. That's okay. <laughs> it's still cool. Like, I don't hold any... I don't hold any animosity towards the Raiders. As long as they're not playing the Chiefs. That is so cool. Thank you. What do we got here? Freshman Fabric. C.D. Lamb? Wow. Dude. You are jump-starting my uh, football card collection for sure. That is sick. 87 of 149. One off his jersey number. How cool is that? That is cool. Thank you. That is so cool. That is really cool. That's one of the awesome things about football. Well, I think maybe one of the awesome things about cards is like you can get some really sick patches and some really pretty sick patch autos like now rookie patch autos are going to cost you but they're really cool cards like and you can get them for pretty good money and i got some filler cards if i ever start if i ever start doing any breaks i'm, I'm getting set up here that's cool thank you and we're not done. We're not done. Wow. Oh. I saw the, saw the back of it. That's all right. A lot of this... This stuff I just don't have a lot of. What is this? Whoa! Bowman Auto, MJ Melendez. Maybe the next Royals catcher after Salvador Perez. 
52nd overall in 2017. I'm going to look him up because I don't know a whole lot about him. His dad coaches at Florida International University. His, I think it says his father built a YouTube channel featuring his life on and off the field. Or he did. One or the other. As of 2020, Bowman, world's number nine prospect, Carolina League All-Star, finished sixth among circuits catchers in RBI. 2018, Minor League Baseball Organization All-Star. Wow. My brother-in-law would probably know about him, actually. More than I'd like. I don't get into prospecting a whole lot. Like, I don't know a lot about prospecting. I watch... Um, my mind just blanked. What the heck? Oh, Rydog. Rydog54. I watch his stuff on prospecting. He knows a lot about it. I I don't know that I'll ever feel confident recommending prospects to people because I just don't trust the minor league stats that much. Um, but uh, I'm glad there are people out there that, that do, you know, have a little better inside knowledge of things. And it looks like we got one left and it's a it's a thick one. It's a thick one, it's a one touch. See you, Ziggy. Or good evening. I thought he meant he was leaving. Good evening. Good to have you. They, Ryan, this is from Sir Charles. Yeah. Joe, you pulled his auto from Pro Debut a few years back. Well, it's pretty cool. He's got a cool auto, too. Kind of cool. A little different. What is this? Oh, that's cool. Project 2020. I don't have any Project 2020 cards. I want to join that club. I know you can get these without being a member of the... What's it called? The Tops Club. The I've got a club name for it. The Montgomery Club, 502 Montgomery Club. I think maybe that's where their corporate office was located, maybe, or is located, 502 Montgomery. I don't know. That is cool. Mariano Rivera. If you've never seen, I think, Baseball Bits has a video on Mariano Rivera. That's really cool. Nineteen ninety two Bowman Baseball. That's iconic to me because it's Mike Piazza's rookie year. So I would always recognize that design, that 1992 design. And this year, um, Bowman did, or Bowman Chrome did 92. This was the year they brought it back for Bowman Chrome. So there's Jason Dominguez 92s. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure they did 92s this year. That's cool. Sir Charles, thank you very much. April! How are you doing? What is that, a little monkey? A little monkey emoji? <laughs> Thanks for being here. Wow. Thank you so much, Sir Charles. You are too kind, sir. I'm going to hold on to these. I'm going to figure out somewhere to... Definitely this Mariano Rivera. I'm going to like put it up where... It can be seen. Maybe like I've got my Nolan Ryan over here. Put it right there. See if that shows up. Is that in the well, it's kind of in the it's in the frame. But I'll I'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Oh yeah. I'm going to show that it, it makes me dopey. It makes me, um, like if there's any links or anything, it makes me show them. 
Like it asks me whether I want to show them or not, or whether I want to hide them. Yeah, 582 Montgomery Club. They only take like members once a year. Um, pretty sure, and it's in like August or something like that. I don't know for sure. I need to look into it. But um, yeah, they only. I'm pretty sure they only take members once a year. But then you can get discounts on a lot of stuff. Uh, it's fairly expensive, I think. I mean, fairly expensive. I think it's $300, $150, $300, something like that. But you get, like, first dibs at, like, Sapphire and stuff like that. Bowman First Edition, certain things. Like, Sapphire was only, like, you can't buy it at stores. Like, it's only offered through Tops. Um, pretty sure. And, you know, different things like that. They've got... And then I think they also send you like some gifts and stuff. I don't know. I watch uh, Striker, Striker breaks sometimes, and uh, Phil's pulls, baseball stuff. I don't watch a lot of breaks, but um, I do watch them some, and uh, I see stuff about the 582 Montgomery Club. So it seems seems pretty cool. I'm gonna put these. Put these spacers up, and then so if if you're if you got in here recently, the uh, the community Discord link is up in the uh, it should be pinned in the comments. So if you want to check that out, I'm only dropping the Discord link in chat, and chat won't be shown in the video replay. So you can only get that through chat, and that's just to protect the Discord. Um, Discords are a weird thing where people can get in there and like they can put some some like um bad stuff, pictures and different things. You can use your imagination, but stuff that could get your Discord deleted basically. So, starting off, you know, I want to be careful, make sure nothing like that happens and um so it'll just be to people in chat. Hopefully that kind of helps us, helps us uh, kind of set up a moder moderator, some moderators and stuff. So if anything like that happens, we can get it deleted and help, you know, decide where the Discord's going, what it's going to look like and things like that. Um, and then, and then maybe open it up to the public. We'll just see. But... I hope, uh, I hope it is, I hope it creates added value to the channel. I guess that's, that's my desire for it. I hope it creates added value for the channel. All right. This is it right here. This is the discord. So I've got a bunch of different things. So there are some rules. Um, you can read those general chat, random, awesome videos. If I find that Mariano Rivera, uh, baseball bits video, I'll put it in there. This is, uh, this is Bailey. He does baseball bits. It's he's got a pretty big channel, um, but they're pretty awesome, especially for like nerdy guys that that lean toward baseball like me. Um, definitely, definitely, pretty cool. Um, pretty cool videos. He's got stuff on people I like, like Ichiro and Barry Bonds, and. Uh, <laughs> stuff that's kind of controversial but one of the videos i have in there is this hall of fame ballot his hall of fame ballot if he was picking i think a hall of fame so he's got like a picture of sammy sosa which is funny and then this one so i've got a i've got a channel all just for random awesome videos this is pretty good lonnie smith who played with the royals and the cardinals was a cokehead in the 80s then got sober while he was a cokehead he had a conspiracy to kill his general manager for the royals um, because he screwed him out of a bunch of money. It's crazy. It's a crazy video, but this is from secret base SB nation secret base. And I like a lot of their videos too. Um, our main topic of the day <coughs> is star stock. I've been finding a ton of deals, a ton of deals. I've been finding a lot of deals on star stock and, and there's a lot of, and there's a lot of holes in it. Like modern basketball is pretty well covered, right? 
The main problem right now, I think, with Starstock is that there's just not that many cards on there outside of modern basketball. Like, for the cards you can find in, like, even baseball stars. Here, let me pull up my collection. Um, so, I bought this Pete Alonzo 2019 Chrome Refractor Starstock A for $40 today. All right. Um, that Starstock A... They have their A, B, and C grade. So an A should range in in the nine to ten grade. It's it's a pretty good card. An A is a pretty good grade. You know, it's not graded, but they have looked it over and you know gave it their grade. And I think they do a pretty good job. And so considering this card sells on eBay for forty dollars or more, getting the Starstock A version for forty dollars was a no brainer to me. And I they it was priced up here around that sixty dollar range. I put in a bid at forty. The last sale was less than 40 and somebody took it. I bought some Cam Newton stuff after I found out he got um, a new contract. I think Cam Newton potentially st still has a big year ahead. And I, I did pay up for his Topps Chrome Starstock A rookies from what eBay sales are. So I paid 30 bucks a piece for three of them. And then got a BGS 9.5 for 50 bucks. And those are selling on eBay for like 70, 80. So, I bought a Darius Garland Prism Rookie, and I know there's, there's a ton of Prism out there, but this is a PSA 10 Prism Rookie for 60 Bought it for 60 Today, I bought a Drew Brees. Drew Brees just retired. His 2001 Bowman base. This is a Starstock B, but I would say a Starstock B in that 7 to 8 range is probably about average for what you'll find on eBay most of the time. Got it for $45. These are selling $60, $70, $80 on eBay. You know, and like I say, it's not the Star Stock A. It's not the 910, but it's about average of what you'll find on eBay. So I thought that was a deal and something I'll, I can hold on to. Um, have it mailed back to me probably at some point in time and maybe sell it on eBay. Um, but I don't. You know, I don't know that Drew Brees stuff will necessarily go up a lot in the next six months. It might. I think it could could be a really good year for football cards. This DJ LeMahieu, I would have, I would buy more of these even at this price, thirty eight ninety nine, if I didn't have seven of them on their way to Star Stock. Like I have six base and one diamond anniversary DJ LeMahieu rookie on. Like they've already been delivered there. Like they're in the process of. Uh, being entered in the system and stuff, but, uh, that, that's taken like six to eight weeks now. So, um, but I bought that for 25 bucks and those in a, we're selling around 500 in a PSA 10. So my rule of thumb is most modern cards with modern population counts. And by modern, I mean like within the last 20 years or so, 20, 30 years, like nineties, 2000s, 2010s, that type of stuff. Normally, you will find unless they have like unless they have condition sensitive, unless they're condition sensitive, you will find their base cards for around 10% of what their PSA 10 goes for. So if their PSA 10 goes for 500, normally you'll pay 50 for the base of a popular player. If their PSA 10 goes for 100, usually you can pick their base cards up for about $10. Now, that's probably changed with PSA's new price increases. The raw cards might be a little less. But even so, uh, $25 is about what his base was going for on eBay. So to get that in a star stock A, I thought it was a great deal. Picked up three John Collins, two for 15 bucks and one for 22 uh, Optic Shock John Collins. I like John Collins a lot. He reminds me a lot of Jimmy Butler. I think he's got a lot of leadership capability. And there's a good chance he'll get traded to a contender. Not that the Hawks aren't necessarily... Like, they have the potential of being a contender, but they probably won't be this year. Um, Connor saw a vid where out of 1,000 submission of A cards, 40% came back 10s, 52% 9s, 72 8s, and like 35 7s. Yeah, it is. 90% um, chance of a uh, 9 or 10 is awesome. And that's great to bring out because that brings me to my <clears throat> main point, which is 
their grading. So if you submit cards from your collection for grading, you pay 30 bucks. And like I said in my video, like I emailed them, they emailed me back. Their December submission was back in two months for $30. It's still $30. Their next uh, submission uh, deadline is April 2nd. Um, the email said they, PSA has told them that their submission will take two months. And I also read or talked to somebody there or I don't, I don't know where I picked up this information, but I, it surprises me that they would get so many eights and sevens back because no, I don't know how many they submitted, but basically what I read or what I found out was that they have some type of different agreement with PSA than most people. So Star Stock is a big deal. Kevin Durant invested like 1.5 million in Star Stock. Uh, they've got some big backers. Um, they basically what I read was they P, their deal with PSA is is that they are not supposed to submit anything that won't get a nine or a ten. Like they're supposed to be very selective about what cards they send in. And in doing so, they get advanced, like advanced return times and lower pricing. And they're probably submitting a lot of cards. Um, but for 30 bucks, even if it ends up being a three month turnaround, which they're told that should still be two months, their December submission was back in two months. Um, that's crazy. Even if it went up to $50 in a three month turnaround, that's still so much better than what you can get anywhere else or on your own. It's crazy. But yeah, 92% either came back a 10 or a nine. I mean, that tells you right there, like their A's are pretty good. Um, only 8% came back an eight or a seven. That's crazy. That's crazy. And every, anybody can miss stuff. Anybody can miss stuff. But when I'm only paying 30 bucks to take that chance, like that was my big thing going in. Like a lot of people ask me about star stock, but my big thing is like, can I trust their grading? Um, do other people trust their grading? And, you know, I feel like I can for the most part. And I feel like most people do that use their, use their site. Yeah. Yeah. I think Connor seven out of 10 cards out of a hundred is about as close to a lock of PSA nine or 10 as you can get. Plus turnaround time is sweet. Yeah. The price, the turnaround time to get that turnaround time, you're paying 150 bucks. Um, to get a four to f actually, I say that. All right. So if you go to PSA has, has done well on their complete through dates for their higher dollar, uh, submission. So their regular submission now is a hundred dollars, but they're complete through January 6th. So they're about 10 weeks out on the $100 submissions, two and a half months, which they were four to five months on their quote unquote regular submission. All right. Um, their express is, um, maybe it was, yeah, the regular, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Regular economy is their four to five month. Right? Yeah. No. No. Regulars are four to five month. So now it's their 10 week, whatever. Express was like four to five weeks. And that's about what it is. It looks like it's about six weeks. And it's $150 now. It was 75, I think. Regular was 50. Now it's 100. Economy was 20, but you, only certain people like shops and stuff could get it like license submitters or whatever it was 20 and now it's, uh, 50, 50 bucks. And if you look at the complete through date for economy, they're still on August 16th. So six, seven months, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, 
Seven months. Seven months. For 50 bucks. So most everybody... So that's when, like, we were having this live stream... Uh, oh, yeah, on Starstock, you pay up front. That is the one difference. Like, if you submit your own stuff to PSA, you pay when you're when they post your grade. So like right before they ship your cards back, that's when they send you the bill. With Starstock, it's 30 bucks, but you pay basically as soon as their deadline comes up or as soon as you tell them to submit your cards is when you pay. It's it's up front. You pay up front basically. I will I feel like I trust their grading enough for the price and the expected turnaround. Even if it's a little disappointing, I trust that enough that I'll pay up front. Like, you got to pay sometime, right? Like, it is nice with PSA. You don't have to pay till you get, you're getting your cards back. Um, but, you know, also paying up front, like, you can save up half the money now and have it done with. That is one. That's a good point, Ryan. You do have to pay up front. That's a big deal. Um, but... Still, I feel like it's a great deal. So right now, that's what I'm looking at for the most part with Starstock is what can I buy right now that I feel like I can submit now in two months from now. Well, regardless, like I can submit and and make money on basically. And I think there's a lot of stuff. So like these John Collins shocks, um, in a PSA nine, I'd expect to get forty to fifty bucks for. So in a PSA 9, I'm basically breaking even. I think the 10s are around 100, 110. So if I ask them to submit three cards and they, they look at them and they decide, well, only two of them are worth submitting. One of them comes back a 9. Let's say one of them comes back a 9. One of them comes back a 10. All right, so I've got, let's say, $150. I paid 60 bucks to have them submitted, and I paid 17 on average, so $94, and I've made... Uh, 56 on those two cards. If they both came back nines, then I'm breaking even. If one comes back at 10, then I'm making basically 50% in two months on my money. Like I'm, I'm good with that. Like that's a good, that's a good turnaround. And, and mainly I'm looking for people that I think will be worth more two months from now. So if John Collins gets traded, I like John Collins, but if, you know, it's different for everybody, but if John Collins gets traded to a contender you know, continues to perform, or maybe in a team, it could be he could perform better. Let's put it that way. He might perform better and be on a contender and be looking at playoffs. All that stuff combined could drive up the price of his cards, along with the modern basketball market is due for an uptick. Like, there are certain cards in the basketball market that have gone up quite a bit um, over the last few months. But nothing like what we've seen last year, which is healthy. Like, last year was stupid, crazy, and, like, unsustainable. Completely unsustainable. But I do think at some point, like, people are going to get back on modern basketball cards because the, quote-unquote, like, GOAT era stuff, the Hall of Fame, 90s Hall of Famers, the, um, you know, the early 2000s LeBron, you know, that type stuff is getting very high in value. Is, is getting very expensive. Um, I think Kawhi 2012 stuff's cheap actually for first year prism, first year select like Kawhi, Jimmy Butler, Kyrie. I mean, all the people that came out of that class, Anthony Davis, everything just seems really cheap to me for first year prism. Like if it was a regular prism, maybe not, but it's first year prism, which has a really low pop count. Um, like, even the first year sil silvers, the prism silvers from that year, like, you can't find one hardly for less than 20 or 30 bucks. Like, your worst common out there that nobody cares about is still going to cost 20 or 30 bucks because they're so rare that even though maybe there's not many people out there trying to put a set together, um, anybody that is is willing to pay for those common cards because they're just really rare. Um,. So anyways, uh, let's get into, do you all have any, anything, anybody you would like to maybe look at? 
Um, I'm thinking about, let's go over to, let's go over to NBA. Let's see who's going to be in the playoffs and who's going to get traded. So NBA playoff, uh, NBA standings. So I did this a week or two ago, but I'm going to do it again. NBA trade rumors. Not on here. I just did it uh, on my own. Like I did this a week or two ago. Um, let's see here. Storylines to watch. Uh, I know uh, Andre Drummond's getting traded. Or probably, yeah, he's definitely getting traded. I don't know if he's ended up getting traded yet. LaMarcus Aldridge. Um, those two don't really excite me as far as the card market. Not that there's not stuff there. It's just they don't necessarily excite me. Um, I'm looking for people that are, uh, you know, like my my brand, over um, overlooked and undervalued. Kyle Lowry might be a play. Um Let me see. And, and again, once you get past, once you get back a little bit, a few years on star stock, it's hard to find cards for people. So gosh, Kyle Lowry's old. There is some of his stuff on here and some of it's pretty cheap. Like his base tops. Mm, the last star stock a sold for $11. Um, is base Bowman the last one sold for 20 tops Chrome that they haven't had any tops Chrome on there. That's what I'm saying is like out of all the brands back, like there's no tops Chrome. There's only seven base tops for sale. Kyle Lowry. Um, and one star stock a, uh, Bowman. That's another thing is, okay, so here's the other play on uh, Starstock is buy stuff on eBay or in person. And that's what I'm trying to do right now too. I'm uh, selling some stuff to have some cash. I've got a couple shows coming up um, because I think that's, I mean, that's where I really shine is I'm able to go into a shop or a show and in a fairly short amount of time, like move through a lot of cards and find stuff that I want that find stuff that I like find stuff that I want and so I think if I go into a show and I focus on active players on brands that they accept um, then I can come out of there if I go in with some money I can come out of there with a lot of stuff that I can send in and you know you can pick if you keep an eye on them you know you you can probably pick up these Kyle Lowry Bowman let's say for a couple bucks, you could probably find some in a dollar bin, honestly. If not, you know, five bucks at the most, if you're just buying them at a shop or a show, for the most part, you can probably find them for five bucks if you can find them, or less, or much less, you know. Like I say, if people haven't updated their pricing in a while, you might be able to find them for a dollar. Um, and if they get a star stock A, you know, the last one sold for 20 bucks. The lowest offer, there's one for sale for 40, the lowest offer is 18. You know, so you, you know, it'll take a couple months for those cards to get in, but then once they get there, you know, if you're careful with how you buy and everything, you make some pretty, pretty considerable money. Um, and I don't think that's going to change. I think it, a star stock a holds, has value over a raw card, you know, um, I think it, it definitely has value over a raw card that it has been processed and looked at and, you know, is, is supposed to be a high quality card. Kevin Love. Let's look at Kevin Love, Connor. Let us look at Kevin Love. Um, where did he get out of there? But yeah, um, you can find stuff on eBay. And you can actually have that sh stuff shipped directly to Starstock, but you have to fill out the form every time. Um, and I'd rather have it like shipped to me and then send a 
fairly good size amount. So like the other day when we were looking at uh, PSA stuff after the PSA price changes, like stuff to submit to PSA, you know, I was really having trouble dealing with some of these cards that um, just weren't worth submitting anymore, or I didn't want to wait, you know, a year to get back. And, you know, after kind of looking into star stock more, um, like this is the answer. Like I can send this card, this modern basketball card to star stock, you know, that I bought for say $40, like in the case of Donovan Mitchell, like $40. If it gets a star stock a, if it gets a B, maybe I lose five or 10 bucks. If it gets an A, then it's worth 75, 80 bucks. So I've doubled my money just by sending it to these people and they don't charge me anything for grading and put it in their system. I'm down with that. I think, you know, I feel confident that most of the stuff I'm going to send in is going to make up for the ones that get B's or C's or whatever. I don't, I don't think I'll send very many in that'll get a C, but, uh, Kevin Love. $120 million contract, heist of the century. Four-year, $120 million with the Cavs. This came out yesterday. I didn't know Kevin Love signed a new contract. Wait. He's earning more this season than Joel Embiid, Devin Booker, Ben Simmons, and Bradley Beal. <laughs> He's got five all-star appearances. That actually might be a good play. Um, let's see what Kevin Love is going for on here. And again, I doubt they have very much Kevin Love stuff on here. 2008-2009 Bowman. There's one for sale for 50 bucks. One tops base for sale from $30. Again, you can give uh, uh, you can put a bid in. Be careful of this. Like, here's a this is a tops chrome, but it's a star stock C. So there's one for sale from 20 bucks or 12 bucks. Huh. Yeah, so there's just not much. When you once you get back past a couple years, there's a ton of prism and mosaic. Um Sexton is another JR Ryder. I don't know. I don't know. I like Colin Sexton. Um I think the problem that Colin Sexton have, and maybe this is what you're alluding to, is his size makes him extremely dependent on his athleticism. So can he maintain that type of athleticism for, for many more years? I don't know. I mean, he's still really young. He obviously can probably maintain it to his, you'd be in 24, 25 years old, but he's got to hit, he's got to be a, a good three point shooter. He has to be, but right now he is, he says, he says he's shooting a thousand threes a day. That's what he says. He's shooting a thousand threes a day. So, you know, um, Connor, Kevin Love might be a good play. You're saying he may be traded. Uh, well, that's the thing is like, if he's making that much money right now, maybe he is. I don't know. I haven't heard any trade rumors on Kevin Love. Um, if he's making that much money, I don't know that another team would want to pick that up or would be able to pick that up. Um, but I'll check out Kevin Love trade. Hmm. Why the Cavs won't trade Kevin Love? He didn't end up going to Dallas. Let's just look at stuff 
within the past week teams hoping to move Kevin Love With his recent return to the court after 30 games away, the time is to, to move him is now. No deal looked possible until LaMarcus Aldridge decided he was moving on from San Antonio. Um, I don't see them trading. I mean... they. I mean, if San Antonio would take on that contract, maybe. I know... LaMarcus Aldridge also has a big contract. Like he's I think he's got twenty four million this year. So like I don't see that as a win for anybody because Kevin Love still got like he's still got legs. LaMarcus Aldridge probably ain't got he 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 doesn't have many years left, probably. From what his body is showing, you know, why would Cleveland pick up a twenty four million dollar contract for a guy that this is maybe his last year, if not, you know, two, and he's probably not going to be super productive. I mean, he still is legit, but he's nursing some pretty big playable injuries. Um, hey, Jason. Jason's back. Nice. Mm. I mean, the Spurs... Yeah, I mean, Kevin Love makes him more legit. But, like, how far do the Spurs get with Kevin Love? Um, I mean, yeah, the Spurs have a good record. And, you know, they, they things keep going their way. They'll be in the playoffs. How far into the playoffs do the Spurs get with, with DeMar DeRozan, Kevin Love, and Keldon Johnson, you know, and the rest of their... I, I mean, I... I and they they're saying love gives them a true power forward over Ke Keldon Johnson. Um, I I I just I don't know why the per I don't know why the Spurs would take on Kevin Love's contract unless they were really planning on making a run. And I don't see them picking up the tools that they need to make a serious run. Like they they would have to go out and get like a top they would need a top 10 player in the league. You know, they would need to be dishing out 40 or $50 million. Um, yeah, the Cleveland might need to pay part of the contract to move him. I mean, Kevin Love was playing good, but Kevin Love's not playing $31 million. Wasn't playing $31 million good. Um, he was probably paying, playing $20 million good. So, yeah, I mean, if Cleveland wanted to pick up, like, $10 million, they could probably move him. But, um, I wonder, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much time he's got left on his contract. If he gets traded, he's got to get traded. To some, I, I feel like in order for his cards to really move, he's got to get traded to somebody who can make a serious run. And I think there are only, I mean, there are some teams that, like, all five of these Eastern Conference teams, Sixers, Nets, Bucks, Heat, Celtics, don't give up on the Heat. Like, they're they're fourth in the Eastern Conference. Like, they've been tearing it up lately. Um, I think they've won, like, their last 10 out of 11, or they had. Something crazy. Um, and then your top five in the West... You know, Spurs are seventh. Mavericks are coming on strong. No, it's the Mavericks that have won their last, like, 10 out of 11. Um, people think the Pelicans can turn around. I honestly don't know why the Pelicans can't. Like, when you look at their tools, Zion, Brandon Ingram, um, Lonzo Ball, uh, Eric Bledsoe, Steven Adams, like, they, they have the tools of a contender. And I, I guess, I don't know. I mean, a friend of mine who's also a big, big NBA, like he says it's Stan Van Gundy. I don't know if it's that Stan Van Gundy 
isn't the right coach for that young team or if that young team isn't willing to buy into Stan Van Gundy. Probably a little bit of both. Um, but if they turn it around, they could they could come up quick. They're still... Uh, how many games are we looking at this season? 72, right? So not quite half the season. I mean, we just got done with the All-Star game, so not quite half the season left. Uh, the Pelicans pretty much have to win... If we're looking at 33 games left, so they need to win probably uh, 25 <laughs> of those. They're not going to make it. So your real, I think your real contender, contenders in the West are these top four teams. I don't think the Nuggets are a serious contender. I wish, 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 hope the Trailblazers could be a serious contender just because I Damian Lillard deserves it. Um, he just does. Like, in my opinion, I just think he's an awesome guy. Uh, is committed basically to Portland. I'd like to see him get, uh, you know, get a little bit of something for, for sticking with that team. Um, I don't know why nobody wants to play in Portland. Everybody hates Portland. I don't even understand it. Like, uh, like, uh, Spurs super team, maybe. Um, like nowadays in modern time, if you make $20 million a year, like you can get on your private jet and go anywhere within a, an hour to hour or two, you can go to New York city. So what does it matter whether you technically live in Portland? I don't, I don't understand that, but it doesn't seem like people still, people still don't and want to, um, same thing with the Seattle Mariners. That's what they were always plagued by. Nobody wanted to go live in Seattle. And I don't think, I think they still kind of don't. So I think you're really looking at Clippers, Lakers, Suns, and Jazz. Um, so, you know, who can we pick up? Uh, hold on a second here. I need to go back. I need to go back. I need to go back. So, let's see here. Players. Wait a second. Who can we pick up? That might Luke Kennard, maybe. I mean, it doesn't have to be like when these guys go on their playoff runs. Patrick Beverly. Um, it doesn't have to be a ridiculously like it doesn't have to be like a top ten or top twenty player, like because these guys are so cheap right now. If they go on a, play, a serious playoff run, um, you know you should see a bump in all the cards of all the guys on that team really mm, let's look at Patrick Beverly Patrick Beverly's good I seen uh Skip Bayless was talking about how the Clippers are like ridiculously better with Patrick Beverly on the floor than they are without him like without him on the floor they're winning like 50 percent of the games and with him on the floor they're winning like 85. Or something like that. 90% of their game. Something crazy. Patrick Beverly. This year. 8.3 points. 3.7 rebounds. 2.1 assists. Shooting 44% from field goal. 42% from the three. 42% from the three. So with eight point, Even though Patrick Beverly contributes a lot more. Um, than what these stats show, right? Um, with those stats, can his cards see a job from where they're at right now? Let's see. No cards found on the star stock. Oh, EY. I was going to say, oh, still no cards found. So 2009, hmm, that's interesting. 
Prestige, Razorbacks. Actually, he might not have had... Excuse me. He might not have had, like, a Tops or a Tops Chrome. Rookie. Maybe he didn't, like, fall high enough in the... Get drafted high enough. Yeah, that's the way it looks. Looks like he has an upper deck with his Arkansas jersey on. Ryan, see ya. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have much his rookie year. That sucks. Um, you know. Not... Not a barn burner, Patrick Beverly, but um, a guy that's really important to the team. So, I really think, like, what I'm looking for when I go to Star Stock is, I mean, just deals in general. Cards that I can buy, whether it's graded cards or whether it's either graded cards I can buy for a decent amount less than what I can buy them on eBay. Um, or if I'm really hyped on the player, then less than just less or the same price as what I can buy them on eBay. Cause it's just way more convenient to buy and sell. If I think their stock is going to go up like that Cam Newton. Okay. With Cam Newton, um, I saw he got signed back. I feel like Cam Newton still got a good year left in him maybe. Uh, so Bill Belichick is, is thinking Cam Newton's got another good year left in him. And then, like, lo and behold, this week, the Patriots went out and spent $81 million picking up tools for Cam Newton. Um, so, you know, Shannon Sharp's on Undisputed saying the Patriots will make the playoffs this year. Well, that's a pretty big deal, even though, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But... You know, Cam Newton's an MVP. He's, you know, he hasn't had a great last couple of years. Um, but still is is well known, has a base, has a following, and uh, could see could see a jump leading up to actually should should see a jump from where he's at now leading up to the season. I would actually, if I could get it on a good price, which I probably can't now. Uh, would like to pick uh, one of his refractor rookies, which is 2011, I think. Cam Newton. Refractor. So he's got orange. This is back when Topps Chrome. Had these like. Uh, Weird color refractors, which they might get back to that. Which for like basketball, it's not weird, but for for tops, it's kind of weird. So there's there's an orange for sixty five. I think you could have bought this a couple days ago or a week ago for probably like twenty forty something like that. Um. There's a PSA 9 refractor for that went for, I need to buy one of those, even if it's a 9. They're just, I don't think there's very many of them. 2011 wasn't a big year for cards. Uh, top report. I think I looked these up at some point in time. The weird thing is, is his refractors go for about the same money as his Topps Chrome base. Which I've been seeing that in football and baseball. And Topps Chrome Refractors, I'm big on because they're so hyped in the basketball market. You know, not that that'll necessarily carry over, but I do think partly it will carry over into baseball and football. Um, but what's weird is like you go back, like Bryce Harper, his Topps Chrome base PSA 10 was going for about the same as his Topps Chrome Refractor PSA 10. Doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. It's just doesn't make sense. So the ball over shoulder is 
the regular, and then there's like this SSP ball at chest, Cam Newton. Um, so the ball over right shoulder, the regular, there's only 37 PSA 10s. Yeah. Wow. And 135 PSA 9, so it's about 1 to 5 ratio of PSA 10s to 9, 20% gem rate. Um, blue refractor we've seen on there for 150 bucks. There's only one PSA 10. And it's not like Cam Newton was a slouch. Like, his card should have been getting graded. Um, I don't think there was as many football cards being sent in for grading at the time, but I think mainly it's just they weren't producing a lot of football cards in 2009. The Refractor, there's nine PSA 10s. That is nuts. And how much are the Refractor PSA 10s? So here's an X-Fractor that went for $25.50. I mean, two Refractors. 30 bucks. No way. I mean, I've looked at these. Here's an orange refractor PSA 10 that went for... <laughs> it says it was a buy it now best offer. Let's see what it actually went for. The orange refractors aren't as desirable for some reason, even though they're like more rare. Um, do you think a possible MLB... PA strike could have major effect on the card market. It definitely could have an effect on the card market. I don't think they'll strike though. Not this year. Um, they'll probably strike again in the future. But I don't think they'll strike this year. I, and, and I might be wrong. Um, have you heard that there's... I haven't heard anything about a strike this year. I mean, I know they had contract negotiations um, about different things, about the um, about the uh, universal DH, about the length of the season, different things. But I didn't hear that. You know, I I think they mainly came to an understanding about how they were going to manage that. Dang it. And uh, the way it sounded to me that they had they had kind of come to an understanding, an agreement. Hmm. So yeah, these are cheap, but you know the base tops chrome. Like here's two that went for fifty bucks. You know, so I paid thirty bucks a piece for those star stock A's. I felt good about that. So here's the tops chrome orange refractor mint. You know. Don't trust that. Always look really closely, but it went for, it says 40 bucks. This, this website might be broke right now, actually. The way it looks, might be broke. eBay might have thrown the, the CBA expires in 21. Let's look that up. I'm interested to know. Um, 2021 MLB CBA. Season structure will be governed by the current CBA. That would mean, among other things, no DH in a playoff field of 10 teams. Okay, the 2021 season already has an agreed upon framework. So, Last season it didn't go very well because they kept making MLB kept making the same offer over and over again. It 
So team, we're having negotiations because team owners are basically um, demanding them. So 2021 season is already covered in full by the collective bargaining agreement. Um, the season structure will be gov governed by the current CBA, which is how it almost always is. Among other things, no DH, da 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 da. There seems to be increasing acrimony among players and owners, increasing distrust of the owner's financial claims that they're losing a bunch of money. Yeah, because they keep lying about it. Um, and also like this whole thing of like, they're uh, basically waiting to call up good players, even though they should qualify. Um, that's got to stop. Like, like they're basically keeping guys intentionally in the minor leagues. They did it to Chris Bryant is the most notable case where they like kept him. They keep him as long as they can in the minors begin because then when they come up, that's when the clock starts on their agreed contract or whatever. So they don't have to pay him for like the first three years they're in the majors. So they wait as long as they can to call him up. Um, to get the most out of them on a short, on a lower contract. So, it's entirely possible that we could see the MLB's first labor stoppage since 94-95 as quickly as December in the form of lockout by owners. Three straight seasons covered. Two by COVID and one by good old labor strike. Okay, so the earliest we would see a strike would be after this season. But we could see a strike this season. Um, my, my, and I, I will, I try to be as clear about this as I can, but I'm still learning how to be clear about this. Um, I, like, I am, here's the thing. I don't hold stuff for very long. Like, I would still say I'm part collector and investor, but I would say my strategy is more flipping. Like, I will go to a show or a card shop and find 20, 30, 40, 50 cards and put them on eBay. Because I know they're you know, I'm going to get a good deal. I can make, you know, 20, 30, 40% on each card and then, uh, flip it. Stuff I buy on eBay, you know, I don't hold stuff very long. And that's what keeps me protected. So like we, the U S economy is extremely overstretched. We have no interest rates to work with. It's very, very possible that at any point in time we could deal with a serious recession or depression. That's just like anybody would pretty much agree with that. Anybody in finance would agree with that. Um, that it's at any point in time, certain things could happen where we could be dealing with a serious downturn in the economy. Um, I protect myself by staying pretty liquid. Like there's points in time when I might have a lot of my money, a lot of my money that I use for cards tied up in cards. Um, but for the most part, I am... I am moving stuff pretty quickly. And that's what people did before. Like you were either basically before um, the last couple of years. You either were a collector and you were holding long term. And it, a collector or an investor that was holding long term. Or how most people made money like dealers. How dealers and how people that did cards full time would buy big collections, buy out, you know, people's whole tables at card shows and make a small percentage off of each, uh, each card, a small percentage. So like 20%, 30%, you know, but 
if you get that turnover, just like in retail, you get that turnover and you can make a pretty decent amount, you know? So I do hold stuff medium term, long term. So like some of my holds are like Ichiro, you know, those cams I would look at as a medium term hold, like up until the beginning of the season and just kind of look at the way things stand. Ichiro, I'm holding for the next few years. Alex Rodriguez, I'm holding for the next few years. Allen Iverson, Ray Allen, all that stuff. Like I will be holding some of their stuff that when I get back, get stuff back from grading, um, that type of thing, the Hall of Famers and stuff. But most of the cards that I deal with, I will turn pretty quickly. And I want to show you all a little example of what that can do. All right. So if you're making 20% on an investment and you buy a card for $10, uh, actually, hold on a second. Let me, all right. You buy a card for $10 and you make 20% um, off that card. All right. And you do that every week. Wait, this is weird. Hold on. This is not right. Um, clear contents. All right, that should work. All right. Nope. How do I do this? Well, um, hold on. If you do that every week for a year, you just take a $10 card and you make 20% off of it. Um, I can't remember how to do this. Oh yeah, that's right. Hold on. He cuts. Yep. If you do that for 52 weeks, make 20% off one card or whatever, two cards, three cards, whatever, you end up with a ridiculous amount of money. So you go from 10, 12, 14, 40, 17, 20, 24, 29, 35, 42. After week 10, you're at 50 bucks. All right. But then it, you know, it's just 20% on each one. After week 15, you're at 128. At week 26, halfway through the year, you pass over a thousand dollars. All right. At the halfway point of the year. But once you get, so you've gone from 10 to a thousand in 27 weeks, you know, you got a hundred thousand percent, I think increase is what that would be. But by the time you get to week 39, you're at 10 grand. And then by the time after a year, you're at $109,000. That is probably the most powerful statement I can make about cards is that you do not need to make two, three hundred percent. Like you take your investment and make 20% off of it every week, find something to buy, go to a shop, go to a show, something, find something to buy, um, for what, for whatever your investment is, you know, and make 20% that you can make 20% off of, or find a hundred cards, that you can buy for $5 and make 20% off of it. That's a little harder because you have to like list them all on eBay and stuff. But anyways, the point is, yeah, if you can make 20% off your money every week for 52 weeks, you'll end up with $109,000 from 10 bucks. <laughs> Mr. Cantel, yes, please like this stream. It will tell YouTube and me that you enjoy it. And they will recommend it to more people. I need to make a video that's like just this, like a minute long, <laughs> like, like just this, this is so powerful. I wish Jesse Nunez was in here so you he could see it. or any of the younger guys, because you know, some of the guys I follow like Ryan Johnson at card collector too. He owns a shop in Ohio. He's younger. He's like 28, but 
he started out flipping cards when he was in high school when nobody else was really, cards were really slow, you know, back in 2012, 2013. But a lot of people will give you the same advice. And this is what it is, is basically you don't have to make a ton. But if you can make a little bit, it adds up a lot over time. <laughs> Thanks, Sir Charles. Thank you. Uh, that is so crazy. It's true. Like it's it's math. It's science. It's science. Uh, it'd be hard to do once you get into the five thousand whatever. Um, it's hard to make twenty percent, you know. But not impossible. Like you go into a show. Like you go into a show, most of the time you're going to find stuff, even your higher dollar stuff, you can find for, they're going to be willing to let go of it for 10 to 15% below eBay sales, right? Because they have to pay for percent, you know, they have to pay the percentage, their fees, they have to pay shipping, all that stuff, insurance, all that stuff. Um, now, if you can get a big, the, I guess the best thing would be if you can get a big like presence on Instagram or forums or, you know, Twitter or something like that, or in Facebook groups, like you have a Facebook group, big Facebook group where you can buy and sell and you have, um, references, people that can say, no, this guy's stand up. He's legit. And other people have references and you can sell that card at comp value, you know, with no fees attached. You know, that's, that's one way of going about that. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the skinny of it. And that's why I really don't hold on to stuff for very long is because my threshold for profit is pretty low. Um, not super low. And definitely if I think there's still some juice left in that orange, I'll hold on to it for a little while, but I don't want to be caught trying to sell that card on the way down. I want to be selling it on the way up. And usually if on smaller cards, like five, $10 cards, if I can double, I'm looking to double my money. But also if I've already posted them, went through the trouble of posting them on eBay, you know, I might take a small loss just to get rid of it, just to turn that money over. Um, or I'm willing to take a, a lesser profit. So like y'all might've seen that Steve Aoki in my card shop vid, that 2016 Topps Chrome Steve Aoki rookie card. Um, uh, I picked that up for next to nothing. I probably paid a dollar or two for that. They were selling at like 30, 40 bucks, um, had come down a little bit. I had listed that card for $29, 29, no, 19, 1999. And I got 15 bucks out of it. Um, with the eBay standard envelope, I pay 50 cents to ship it. I always do free shipping because that increases your, uh, rec your, that, that tells you like eBay will show your your listing higher on the rankings if you have fast and free, which is one day handling time, uh, two week returns, and free shipping. So I always do free for buyer shipping. So I sold that car for fifteen bucks. Basically, is what I'm gonna say. I had it listed at nineteen ninety nine. Sold it for fifteen bucks. After fees and shipping, I made probably yeah I probably got twelve twelve fifty out of it for a car that I paid a dollar or two for. So even though it's not that 30 or $40 that some of those cards were selling for, had some light surface scratching and I more, way, way more than tripled my money. Probably sold that card for four or 500% over what I had in it. Um, same thing with that Jay-Z rookie card. I really like that card, but I put it up for 30 bucks because I'm like, you know, I don't know how this entertainment stuff's going to do. Um, put it up for 30 bucks, sold it for $19.99. Just sold it. I actually need to ship that card. Um, so I'm very willing to make deals on those cards that I don't have hardly any money in, which, you know, that's one of the biggest benefits of having this channel is it has forced me to do so much research that when I go to a show or when I go into a, somebody's shop, very quickly I can identify cards that I want that I, I can find more cards that 
I can make money off of than what I can afford to purchase at the time, which is not a bad, that's not a bad problem to have. Um, but I just, I, with work and everything, I don't, at some point, um, I would like to be able to get around a lot more, go visit a lot more shows and a lot more shops, but that point is not right now, but it will come in the future. And that's how you can make money really in any sports card market. Like you don't have to have these 100, 200, 300% returns. Like if you're making money after fees and shipping, like if you make, if you're making money, you're making money. Like that's, that, that's always going to be true. If you're making money, you're making money. Connor. Oh yeah. Connor was showing me this Ichiro. It's a gold Ichiro rookie seven twenty number 726 from 2001 tops. The golds are really rare. Um, and I was telling him, you know, those cards raw rarely go for under 500 bucks. And I think it was at like 250 and it was a, we'll find out, but I think it was a BGS 8.5 or a nine. Um, each row 726 gold. Yeah. No B it was a Beckett eight. And I'm not, that's one of the things I'm not familiar. Like, is this just like, this isn't BGS. This is not BCCG. This is just a Beckett eight. And what I told him was basically they rarely go for less than 500 bucks in a raw form. This one's pretty well centered. It's nine centering. Um, the corners don't look terrible. That top left corner doesn't look amazing. That bottom left corner doesn't look amazing, but not terrible. And both the right corners look pretty good. The problem is Probstein never puts the backs on these cards. So this card, I'm pretty sure even the golds have like that dark green back and they can have a lot of chipping. And even though PSA says uh, the backs aren't as big a deal, they are. Like, like the chipping on a dark border is a big deal. Um, the centering is a bigger deal than they let on. Like they tell you, you can get 75, 25 centering on the back and still get a PSA 10. Meh. I mean, if there's absolutely any flaws at the front, no, you cannot. And I think on, I mean, I think on PSA nine, they say you can have like 90, 10 centering. No, it's not that much, but it's anyways, I feel that they're, they, they still will allow more on the backs, but they're more strict than, than, uh, than what they let on, what they advertise. So yeah, that's my biggest problem with like trying to find cards that'll cross over. Like I can't buy them from Probstein cause I can't see the backs of them. You know, this card from the front does look like a PSA eight. It, it, in my opinion, with those two corners like that and the centering, if it was just the centering and the corners looked really good, I could see it with a PSA nine. I, I don't know if this is Beckett old label. I think that's what this is. Beckett old label without subgrades. Um, you know, but without looking at the back, I don't know. I think that would get, nah, I don't know. I don't know if that would get a PSA eight. That top left or top left corner looks weird. That bottom, if it was just that bottom left corner, hmm, I don't know. I think you're, you're for sure, if it was just that bottom left corner, you're for sure to get an, at least an eight, if not an 8.5. I don't think you'd get a nine. I think you would have to have just the centering off a little bit top to bottom uh, to get a nine. It doesn't look like it's off that much, but I think that's a little deceiving. It's off a little more than what it looks like. Um, but that top left corner is a doozy. It's hard to tell without having it with you. Mr. Cantell bought seven Bobby Witt Jr. Bowman Chrome cards for what? Eight bucks a piece. Sold them Con C for 35 bucks a piece. Am I an idiot? No, I don't think so. I think, I mean, I, I would never say that if you can, if you can make that kind of money, that's, that's a go. Like there's nothing saying Bobby Witt Jr. is going to take off. And even if he does really well, he still plays for the Royals. I was thinking about that before the stream tonight. Like, I love the Royals. They're my team, but it's a small, small market team. And you can do really great while playing for the Royals. 
and your cards could still not be worth a whole lot of money. Um, the Whereas like on the rank Yankees, you could be average and your cards are still going to go for a lot of money because <laughs> they're just a huge market team. There's a lot of people that are willing to pay for Yankees cards. Are willing, they're going to go for more. That's the truth. But yeah, if you can make for sure freaking four four over four times your money, four hundred percent, I would take it. I mean, maybe you hold on. You bought seven, and on ComC anymore. From what I understand, I haven't had any sharp card ship back to me. Like I just basically buy and flip on there and honestly with star stock now the way it is i'm not shipping near as many cards to com c um but everybody i've talked to is like now like you're not you're not getting any psa 10s back from com c anymore because nobody's sending them like you might get a couple but you're not going to get many nines or tens um Yeah. Yeah, he... Actually, yeah. I don't know how much Bobby Wood Jr. is going to play this year. I th He played some last year, though. Right? No, he didn't. I thought he played some towards the end of the season, but I don't think he did. No, he didn't. I'm crazy. Bobby Witt Jr.'s future. Oh, grow up, Kansas City star. Ugh. How Bobby Witt Jr. is creating a predicament. <laughs> uh, there's no such thing as spring training MVP award, but if such an honor did exist, be it for the most valuable... Uh, or the most viewable player this year might go to Bobby Wood Jr. Number two, number two pick in 2019 draft. Batted 333, 379, 667 for the spring. Three home runs and 27 at-bats. Including a behemoth 480-foot footer he clobbered last week. And the one he launched Sunday against Julio Urias. No, I'm not going to play it. If I play it, it, it throws up a demonetization copyright automatically, and I'm just not. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, yada, yada, yada. Dayton Moore is a pretty good guy. And he is, it says he's shown no inclination to operate in bad faith practices the way his peers often do with a plum. More famously promoted Eric Hosmer to the majors in May 2011, even though he could have saved future dollars by waiting a month. Last year, the Royals carried rookie pitchers Brady Singer and Chris Bubich for all but eight combined days of the season. That's pretty legit. Most MLB owners are friggin' scumbags nowadays. And like I said, they'll, they'll hold guys. And that's why you have players like Alex Gordon and Salvador Perez that play for the Royals their entire career. <laughs> like, you're costing yourself money by screwing these guys out of money. You really are. Now, Hosmer, he's with the Padres, but... But, uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll see uh, Bobby Wood Jr. But that's just, that's, that's also part... That's what makes you a Royals fan. I mean, you got to live close to Kansas City pretty much to even know what the Royals are doing. But the the main thing I take pride in is, you know, you can still go to games for free. They still have free or dollar nights. You can still go to games for a dollar. Um, they've spent a lot of money on the ballpark, especially since the World Series. Uh, they have pretty good, like they never have like, um, Drama, really. It's cool. Chris Martin? Sure, Mr. Cantel, anytime, man. I 
I don't know that I'm an expert on anything, but I, I'll try to share whatever whatever I can, my opinions or whatever I know. I'll try to share with you all. Chris Martin, I just bought the missing cards for 2020 update and I won't get cards until May or June shipped home. Quote for ComC. Yeah, they're like 12 weeks out on their shipping. That's the other thing. Don't plan on having anything shipped home unless you're willing to wait a few months for it. Uh, they said they hired 50 new people in their shipping department, so hopefully that helps, but right now it's pretty bad. Jason, sorry you've been quiet. Sun pulled out his first edition Pokemon. Wow. Surprised to say the least. I think you were, weren't you telling me about that? He had some first edition Pokemon, or did you send some pictures about that? You might post some pictures in the new Card Collects Discord community. There's a poke, There's a Pokemon tab. There's a trading card game tab. I'd like to see him. Be perfectly honest. Yeah, Pokemon trading card games. Pokemon trading card games. Yeah. That's awesome. First edition. I think first edition Pokemon is a good investment. I do not think that's a fad. Anything that rare with that many that much exposure? No. That's the thing with Beanie Babies. Had Beanie Babies actually been rare, they had plenty of exposure to be collectible and to gain value over time. They just were not rare at all. Like, even the early ones were not really rare. Like, you had to have, like, the very first ones. Um, which Pokemon, you know, first-ish Pokemon, but, um, yeah, that, that, and I'm not going to get into Beanie Babies, but Ty Warner, I think it was Ty Warner, they made Beanie Baby, not Ty Warner. Yeah, I think it was Ty Warner that made Beanie Babies. Ty Beanie Babies. He intentionally created Beanie Babies to give the impression of being collectible. Um, like he structured the entire company and all the sets and all the everything to give the impression of being have scarcity, rarity, and be, collectability when they never really actually had that. It's kind of the way I feel about NBA Top Shot. It's kind of the way I feel about NBA Top Shot. Like, I know NFTs and digital assets are huge right now, but they have specifically created the impression of rarity. And for some of those, there there is real rarity there. But 10,000 of something is not rarity, right? Like, we can see that with PSA 10s. All right, so like those don't have a grade. 10,000 top shots or 10,000 of the highest grade top shots, right? So, yeah, yeah, I mean, up until the last two years, you wouldn't see 10,000 PSA 10s on anything. All right, so I feel like not, I, I'm not completely against them in any way whatsoever, but I do feel like they've gone out of their way to create the impression of rarity, which is, I, I feel like what they have done the last year is similar to what Beanie Babies did in the nineties. Not that it's the same thing at all. I just, I feel fairly similar. No Charizard. Hey man, that's all right. Pokemon Red Cheeks has gone from like $1,500 to like $15,000 in a few months. I think crazy. The PSA 10, I think it's maybe 2,500 to 15,000. Crazy. But I think any first edition Pokemon, even like the, like commons, anything first edition Pokemon is a good investment. Um, can't Mr. Cantel, maybe I'll take that money and get his Bowman Chrome Refractor Auto graded by PSA or BGS. Yeah, do it. If you got one. Um, I mean, whatever you think, he's having an awesome spring training. Now I will say the pitching that you face in spring training is not the same that you face in the regular season. Um, but still like compared, I mean, everybody else is facing the same pitching. Um, but everybody else, you know, your Mookie Betts and your Mike Trouts, your Cody Bellinger's are probably not going into spring training and try harden it. 
you know, like giving it all they got. Like it's spring training. It's meant to prepare you for the regular season. Whereas like your, your prospects are really trying to make a showing in spring training. So yeah, I mean, you're the pitching you're facing is not the same, but, um, but you know, do, you know, do what you feel is right. You know, what you want to, you know, do what, I mean, obviously like they're saying he could, could have gotten the MVP for spring training. So that tells you something, but that's all I'll say is like Royals players, even if they play really, really well, usually don't get very much attention. So you don't expect his cards to do anything like what Tatis or, or Juan Soto or, you know, unless the Royals do have another big season, um, even if they do, there's just it's just a tiny market that's surrounded by tiny markets. Um, besides Chicago, but there's no Royals fans in Chicago, and honestly, there's no Royals fans in St. Louis. Not very many. Like the cutoff is Mid Missouri for Royals fans. Is like the cutoff is like Mid Missouri and like friggin' Topeka, Kansas. Like there's your Royals fans. There ain't much. <laughs> Kansas City is the only thing in between Mid-Missouri and Topeka, Kansas. That's it. So, it's a small market team. And even in the World Series, like, you didn't see big jumps in Alex Gordon or Eric Cosmer or Mike Moustakis or um, any of those guys, really, in cards. Not like, not like what they would have seen had they been on a bigger market team. Mr. Cantell, Buster only gives KC management a good grade for not manipulating service time as much as most teams. And puts a decent product on the field. Yep, they do. They have an awesome farm system. Um, you know, f for a team that their management has to be good for a team that has maintained the budget they've maintained and didn't go to the playoffs for 30 years. Like, literally didn't go to the playoffs from 1985 and then went to the World Series and then won the World Series. Like, and they, they've posted some decent teams since the World Series. Machado's looking undervalued. Fish and Dive Hawaii. Machado is looking undervalued. I own a couple Machados. I will say, okay, so this is what I say about Manny Machado. Manny Machado is by far the most hateable player in the MLB. I get a kick out of Manny Machado, even though he does some really bad stuff. Bad stuff. Like, from the way it looks, he intentionally tries to injure players. You know, picks fights, gets ejected, charges them out. He's always creating drama. I think it's part of his shtick, but he's the most hateable player in the MLB. That said, I do own a PSA 10 rookie of his. I've owned a couple of his rookies. I own one right now that I haven't, I'm still sitting on that I bought for like, I think it's his Bowman. I think it's his Bowman paper, but I think, I don't even know if they, I don't think they had Bowman Chrome in 2013. Yeah. Yeah, I do own his Bowman, uh, PSA 10 Bowman rookie. Um, let's see if I can, uh, if you all can see that. 18 bucks. I don't know what that sells for now, the PSA 10. I'm guessing it sells for more than 18 bucks. Um, but this was, I bought that probably six months ago. And I was like, yeah, 18 bucks. I don't care if, like, hate is overrated in my opinion in cards. Like, it doesn't last that long. Like, look at, you know, I mean, when was I starting to talk about Alex Bregman? I think in December, like when I first started this channel, it was one of the first people I was like, yeah, like buy Alex Bregman. They're way too cheap, yada, yada, yada. Everybody's like, uh, he's like, he plays for the Astros. Everybody hates the Astros. It's like that stuff fades really quickly. Um, and I mean, I, I'm still holding a lot of Alex Bregman stuff that I bought, but, um, like I bought four at one point I bought four PSA tens for 50 bucks 
of his gray jersey, I think Bowman, RC rookie. Four PSA 10s of his for 50 bucks. I should have bought, the guy had nine of them. And I wanted to buy all nine, and I don't know why, but I didn't. I think because after I bought those four, I was going to buy those four. And then uh, offer the same thing for the other five. Make an offer for the other five. And he jacked the price up right after I bought those four. I got them for twelve fifty a piece from him. Uh, four of them for fifty bucks, and then he raised the price to twenty five bucks a piece. I gave him an offer, but then he quit accepting offers. I think something like that. I I can't remember. It was weird, but um, I sold those for I think one hundred and twenty bucks. I think I sold those five or four. For 30 bucks a piece. So after fees and shipping, I made about $40. Almost doubled my money on them. And that was like, wasn't that much later. Like maybe six weeks later. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Manny Machado's hated, but he also puts up huge numbers, and he's on playing for the Padres, who should have an amazing run this year, have an amazing team this year. Um, just bought a PSA nine Machado Topps Chrome rookie for sixty five bucks. I think that's a card I would call a card that you should hold through the beginning of the season. Like, there's a lot of cards I would, I would probably consider. No, I mean, I, I'm considering selling a lot of cards before the season starts. I do think you'll see a dip after the beginning of, uh, or like into the beginning of the season. I think you'll see a spike right now for about the next two weeks. And then I think you'll see a dip because of stimulus checks. I think you'll see a spike in baseball cards. Then I think you'll see a dip. And then I think you'll see them come back up. I don't think they'll shoot up to crazy ridiculous numbers over the summer or anything, but I think it'll be a stronger market than what we have seen. So like those refractor PSA 10s that I was saying, you know, like Cody Bellinger and Corey Seager, um, if they have a good year, I could see those, their PSA 10 rookie refractor, their Topps Chrome rookie refractors that were at 200 bucks and are now at like closer to 350 to 400 to 500. Um, for top scrum refractors, I mean, by the, if they have good years, I could see those pushing 800, $900,000. Um, I don't like if I can get my money out of them, um, I'll probably sell them before the season starts. Because that, that CPO was just undervalued that I bought a Cody Bellinger. I got that for 200 bucks. Like, people are... I put, they, like, that in the last couple of weeks has gone up. There haven't been that many sales. But, like, the lowest asking price is, like, over $400. It's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Um... But with fees and shipping, like if I sell them, I have to get a considerable amount more than what I paid for them to get a de decent return. And what's the future, like opportunity cost? That's all things that should be considered. Like, um, but if I can get my, if I can get a decent return on them, then I'll probably sell them before the season starts. Mr. Cantell, I live 10 minutes from Miller Park. Small market. So Yelich is an investment for me. And looking for an Eloy Jimenez 2019 Heritage Purple Chrome. Definitely. I like Eloy. I like Christian Yelich too. Christian Yelich is one of those guys. I'm trying to, I'm going to make a video. It's like guys you should hold. And these are just guys that are, I think are still undervalued. Um, but also like produce every year. So like Freddie Freeman, Nolan Orenado, um, Anthony Rendon, Christian Yelich, those type guys, guys that, um, you know, just come out and produce every year. Mike Trout, you know, Mookie Betts are those type guys, uh, guys that come out, have been in the league a while, come out and produce every year, but you know, I'm kind of looking at cards that are a little 
more undervalued than like Trout and Mookie Betts. Even though I think later Topps Chrome refractors of Mike Trout and Mookie Betts might be decent plays. Might be pretty good plays. I even think like like uh, Juan Soto's cup cards might be pretty good plays. Like his cup card refractors and his... Juan Soto absolutely has crushed the ball since he came up. Hey, Jesse Nunez. Woo-woo. Finally here. Gee, my niece, dude. Hey, did you did you see... I don't know if you saw the emoji I put on the dis Discord. Um, let's see. Where does it say? Oh, yeah. It says everybody that shows up. All right. Got some more guys on the Discord. Uh, did you see the emoji I put on there, Jesse? It's it's a couple paper clips. I thought you'd like that. But anyways, um, fish and dive Hawaii. You treating star stock like penny stocks or day trading, or are you buying and holding in their vault? Basically, what I'm looking at star stock is is star stock is not a very mature market yet. So most of your cards and most of your trading and most of your maturity in, in the star stock market is in modern basketball, right? Um, baseball, football is not really too mature. You can still find star stock A's in baseball, football, and soccer for what the raw cards are going for on eBay. And I think a star stock A should definitely hold better value. Um, and then it's also not a very mature market yet. So you can find deals like I got this Darius Garland PSA 10 prison base for 60 bucks. They're going for like 80 on eBay right now. Um, got that yesterday. This Pete Alonzo rookie refractor I bought today for $40. Okay. They're going raw on eBay for 40 bucks, somewhere around there. So star stock a should hold more value than that. Um, this Drew Brees, they're going for $75.80. I bought that this morning or yesterday for $45. It's a star stock B, but I feel like that's basically the same grade as what uh, your average eBay sale is. Uh, this DJ LeMahieu I bought a week or two ago for $25, which is what it's going for raw. I think that's undervalued as a raw card, seeing as the PSA 10s were going around $400, $500. Um, and being that it's a star stock A, so here's the other thing. So most of these star stock A's, I will submit through them for grading. Right now, they're talking about their next deadline is April 2nd. They charge you $30 a card. Uh, their like, information I've learned, they have some type of special deal with PSA. So they are only supposed to submit cards that that will grade a nine or a 10, you know, their, their gem rate has to stay pretty high. Their mint, you know, their nine and 10 percentage needs to be really high to comply with their agreement with PSA. Um, but they've been, their December submission at 30 bucks was back in two months. Uh, and they were told by PSA that their submission will be back in two months. Um, so, I'm buying cards to submit right now, you know, for 30 bucks. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stuff that I would feel comfortable submitting for $30, paying $30 and having a, basically a 50, 50 chance of getting a nine or a 10, right? So this refractor in a PSA nine in a PSA 10, these go around one, I think 175 right now. 150 to 175 something like that in a nine i think they go for about 60 maybe 70 so in a nine i'm breaking even that's what i'm looking for I'm looking to break even in a psa nine on these um i would expect a star stock a to rank somewhere up around a nine or a ten and if you ask them to submit them they will look at them again and like i said they're supposed to only send stuff to psa that will grade a nine or a ten uh, this Cam Newton, 30 bucks. His PSA 10s actually do really well. They sell for around 300 bucks. Uh, the nines, not so much, but I think I'd still get 60, $75. I'm looking for cards that I think 
will not only go up in value across the board, but also um, already, if I get a PSA 9, I can break even. Uh, John Collins, I really like John Collins. Uh, for $15, look what I was paying for these. Uh, I average, I did buy one for 22, so I average like $17 a piece for three of these. You know, a PSA 9, if I've got $47 in it, I'm cool with that. If I get a PSA 10, you know, 100, 110 bucks for a shock, optic shock, John Collins, you know, I'm cool with that. And I think John Collins, there's a good chance he'll get cra- traded. I think if he gets traded to a contender, um, then that obviously could increase the value of his cards. I think he could get he could play better, produce more in a different system, which would increase the value of his cards. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, yeah, PSA ten LeMayhews are going for five hundred dollars. I would buy more of these, even at the prices that they're at. There's two for sale, so Star Stock A I bought for twenty five bucks. I have seven of these, like that I ship to Star Stock. Uh, with the intention of submitting the ones that get an A. I don't think all of them will get an A, but the fact, you know, this one for 25 bucks, I couldn't pass that up, even though I have seven of them that I shipped to Starstock. Uh, six that I had in my collection, then I bought a Diamond Anniversary for 85 bucks. It's in pretty good shape. I don't think, I mean, I don't think there's any chance it would get a 10. If it nine, I would be plenty happy with that. I think his diamond anniversary, the PSA 10 of his in a diamond anniversary would be the way to go because they're going for not a whole lot more than what the base was going for, you know, five, six hundred dollars. Those really should be about four times what the base goes for. It's just a market inefficiency, in my opinion. Doesn't mean that it'll change, but it should change. Um, Oh, Grant McCray, Bowman Crumb. Chris Martin, do you watch uh, Rye Dog 54? He was talking about Grant McCray the other day. That is a d- deal. And the like prospects, that's the thing about prospects. I don't know enough about prospects to uh, feel comfortable recommending anybody, but they're so cheap. They're so cheap. If you hit on one, it covers a bunch of them. Fish and Dive White, yeah. You just have them grade. Like, they're not going to grade your B cards or your C cards. Like, you tell them what cards to take out of there to grade, and they will then they will look at them and decide whether they actually, you know, have a good chance at a 9 or a 10. And then those are the cards. If they think they will, they will automatically submit them unless you email them and tell them not to. They won't even tell you. Like, they'll just submit them. And if they don't think they will, then they'll just put them back in your account, basically in your collection. Chris Martin, I've been using Starstock for low low risk prospects. I think that's a good idea. That's mainly, like modern basketball and baseball prospects is mainly what's on Starstock right now. I mean, there's a lot of modern football, but that's the biggest problem with Starstock is like a lot of people have bought cards on there and just hold them in their collection, in their vault. There isn't a lot of stuff for sale, really. Unless it's like base mosaic rookies. There's like a hundred of them. Of every player. (laughs) But there's not a lot of... A lot of... Like, just a lot of everything. Um, Got a ton of rookies on the low on Star Stock. That's the thing. That's where I see the biggest inefficiency. Is if I can buy a Star Stock A of a player that I have some confidence in. For the same price as what I can buy the card raw on eBay for, like that's a that's a good move in my opinion, buying the Star Stock A. I think that's an inefficiency all in itself, is that if you look at the modern basketball cards on there, for instance, that Donovan Mitchell that I covered, this the raw cards on eBay you buy for 30, 40 bucks, the Star Stock A is 75. All right, because people trust the grading to a certain extent because the market's just more developed, more mature on the basketball cards. People understand that a star stock A should go for more than a raw card on eBay. Same thing with players that are more mature. So like your Juan Soto, your Cunhas, your Fernando Tatis Jr., your Jason Dominguez. 
you're not going to find deals like that in those guys. But you can still find deals in great players. I mean, DJ LeMahieu, you know, Cam Newton, Drew Brees. This, this Drew Brees threw me. Just because this is completely undeveloped on here. That, you know, even before he announced his retirement, these cards on eBay were going for 75 80 bucks. This Bowman football base. Um, this one's 45 and a star stock B. I bought it up because I'm like, that's about the average of what you'll see on eBay. What's a star stock? Sorry. Ellie, you've been in and out of here forever. How are you going to say you just got on here? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a company. You send cards to, they have a marketplace. You can buy and sell cards on there. Uh, when you send your cards in, they will give them like an A, B, or C grade like their grade, it costs you nothing to send cards in. They will grade them and put them in the system for free. Uh, normally it costs you three, like their setup is it costs you 3% to deposit money into your account, but it's been free for a long time. So it's just like free. They don't charge you right now. Anyways, um, they charge 5% on sales and if zero on withdrawals on their end. Now, if you use PayPal, PayPal will charge you 2.9% their PayPal fee. Uh, but Starstock doesn't charge you. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. With baseball, Chris Martin grabbed an Aquino PSA 10 for $25. Less than the cost of grade. Yeah, players that had down years. Yeah, if you can buy a player that has upside for less than what you can... Like, that card's probably not going to go below $25. Like, even if he doesn't have a great year, like... PSA 10s have value. Like, there's usually not a point you can't sell that card for $15 at the worst case scenario. Like, that's a that's a good play all day. Has anyone noticed card sales are down the last few weeks? Mm. I mean, depending on... Like in basketball, they've been pretty stagnant till since like the beginning of February. In baseball, they shot up really quickly between January and February. They're still going up. They've pretty much been going up in baseball ever since the beginning of January. Into December. Um... Football still is strong because the 2020 football releases haven't finished yet. Select football. I, I'm big on select football. I know everybody, like nobody in football cards likes select football, but I think that'll change because most of the people that have come into football cards in the last year have never been exposed to select football because they weren't around last year when it dropped. The season before last when it dropped. So, you know, most of the collector base for football right now wasn't even in cards a year ago. Or, you know, they were, but not really. So, like, everybody's just under the assumption. It's kind of like selecting basketball. Like, oh, you know, selects secondary to prism. Well, the Luca Select PSA 10 was going for, like, $500, $600, where the, the prism was 1800 And now the prism had gotten down to like 1300 and the selected got up to a thousand. I think a similar thing is going to happen in football. So let me show you this card I've been tracking on eBay. I, I really want to invest in some, um, some select football. Let me see if I can find it. I, I, I pinpointed a bunch of Blake Griffin cards just to see what they do. I might buy it. the golds. The Blake Griffin golds look pretty good. Um, DK Metcalf select silver field level. So I think if the football market does good, everybody says it's all about quarterbacks. That doesn't mean that that other players are worthless. Like, that's the way I feel like when I hear that, that's the way I feel like people say it. That, like, you know, football's all about quarterbacks. Like, why even pay attention to any other, like, position player? What? 
What happened to the card I was tracking on here? There was one of these on here for like $450. I don't think it's sold. I think uh, it's under... Actually, I'm just going to search Metcalf. So, Silver Field Level. There was one on here that I was tracking that was like $450. Either way, DK Metcalf, one of the biggest names, biggest receivers in the NFL. His rookie field level silver, which is like SSP, super short print, select silver, PSA 10. They were selling, they were selling for under $500. Like one just sold for less than $600. This website's broken, by the way. Let's see if, let's see if this Firefox extension. I'm going to go ahead. Okay, got it. I deleted it and added it again to see if it works now. Yeah, okay, so now it works. So you've had that trouble. But yeah, still $556 um, for DK Metcalf rookie field level silver. That's crazy to me. Whereas like the courtside, a courtside Luka Doncic silver, PSA 10, I would hate to know what that even goes for. Like, let's look it up. I bet it's 50 grand or better. I bet they don't even have any on here. Oh, $35,000. Like, I know that's Luca and it's basketball. But I'm just saying, my opinion, like $30,000, $35,000. In my opinion, $555 is way, way, way too cheap for DK Metcalf select field level silver. And the main reason I say that is I feel like Select has what they call XRC, which is like rookie cards of this year's draft players that they send you, the redemptions that they send you after the draft is done, like almost immediately. And it's in their pro jerseys. It's like as soon as the draft's done, like they have some that like you have the number one defensive pick. You have the number one overall pick. You have whatever, like, like that's how they do it is like they get, you pull a redemption, but it doesn't tell you exactly what player you get a certain spot in the draft and whatever player falls there is who you get. That's a, like, that's a little cool thing. It's a lot of fun and it's something that, um, is big about select. And I just feel like a huge portion of, of the people out there that are saying people in football cards don't care about select have absolutely zero exposure to select. Like they have never been in football cards when a select drop happened, when the product was released. Like they have just heard from other people in football cards that foot people in football cards don't like select, which is just like this broad general statement that shows very little, like it just, it's not necessarily, it's an axiom. It's an axiom. I'm just going to sound smart there. I think an axiom is something that is believed to be true, but is not necessarily true. Uh, Otani. Otani is picked up a lot. I had quite a bit of Otani from his rookie year, so I'm glad I had that. Jesse, wasn't there a recent announcement that PSA is guaranteeing a certain window for star stock? Yeah, I think. Heard the new wait time could be about a year. Any news on that? The new wait time for star stock? I don't think so. They haven't said anything about that. The new wait time for PSA is already a year. Like if you look at, by the time you get your cards to them and by the time they get them back to you, like, they're just now on July. That's their completion through date. 
So that's okay. So you send your cards to PSA. It takes them a certain amount of time to enter them into the system. So that might be two or three months. All right. So if they're on July, that was eight months ago. If it took you, you know, a week to mail it to them, a week to mail it back, and two months, I mean, you're, you're 10 months, I think, is right now, like that's kind of your, your best case is people that got in the system in July. Um, so yeah, it might be a year. Stephen Washington Lamelle Crusade refractors are on fire right now. Just look at what his leaf cards did over the last couple of years. Anybody else thinking Ferrari by summertime? Ferrari? What's Ferrari mean? Like that their Lamelle is going to take off by summertime? XRC are sweet. Yeah, Grant, they are. They're, it's just a fun, really cool thing that. Like, Top should do something like that. Like, you get this redemption. You don't know who it's going to be. It could be awesome. It could be a bust. And even after you get it, you don't really know whether they'll be good or not. Um, but, like, with the people in this year's draft, like, I feel like XRCs are going to be a big deal. I think Select's going to get a bump. I think football cards could get a bump this year. I need to buy some Select football. Like now, but I don't want to invest the money right now for something that I don't want to hold it for six months. Like I can make so much more off that money than what those cards are going to go up in the next six months. Oh, wasn't guaranteeing. Oh. Oh, they weren't guaranteed. Yeah, they, they're they not guaranteeing a certain window. But, like, Starstock got their last submission back in two months. As of a week ago when I emailed them, PSA was telling them that their submissions would be back in two months. So that's all I know. And I know they have some type of special agreement because, like, they've said... That they're basically they're supposed to only submit stuff that they that will get an eight or a nine. That's I don't know where I read that or who I talked to about that, but it was from Starstock. I think they've deleted it since then. Maybe not. I don't know, but um, I know I read that or got an email about that somewhere. I think they sent me an email about that. I think they did because I was asking about some things, other things besides that other email I sent. Um, Jason heading to Springfield in a couple weeks. What was the card shop you talked about? Centerfield, Centerfield Sports Cards is downtown, and then on Battlefield is Fast Break Sports. There's also another one that I haven't been to. But Centerfield's the one that I did the video about that just has like no prices on anything. Just boxes, four or five row boxes stacked up to the, like your waist, like just sitting in there that you can go through and you just like no order of anything. Like he said, he mainly makes his money off wax. And then this is just collection. Like he buys collections and just sets them out for people. <laughs> It's crazy, but it's super fun, and you get some re like he gave me some really good deals, for sure. Um, so yeah, center field sports cards. So oh Jesse, I wanted to show you this. So pay attention. All right, this is what happens if you take ten dollars. And a $10 card and you make 20% off of it. THT. What is, I don't know what that means. What does THT mean? Gosh, you're, I don't know. But anyways, 
if you make 20%, like you don't have to make, it's just showing you don't have to double your money on everything. You don't have to make 300% profit on every card. If you make 20% a week and you do that for a year, like you make 20%, roll that over, make 20%, roll that over, make 20%. After 52 weeks, compounding interest, you will have made $109,000. You will end up with $109,000. That's true. Like, that's science. What does T... All right, now I gotta look this up. I'm such a boomer. I gotta look this up. The whole truth. The whole truth. Think happy thoughts? What? Joko, in Liberty, Missouri, there is a place called the Warehouse that has stacks of boxes of baseball, football, and basketball. Really? Ooh. Where's my $109,000? I have bills to pay, Jesse. I'm an adult. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You would think. Like, maybe I'll get there one of these days. But that's just, that's my philosophy. I don't have to make 100% on every card that I buy. If I can make 20 or 30% on a lot of stuff, I'm good with that. And this, if I can hold that, then I'm good with that. But if I can make more, uh, that's even better. Ooh, I want to check that out. The Warehouse. In Liberty, Missouri. The Warehouse Sports and Recreation. Oh, this sounds like a place I would love. Quit it, Facebook. Oh, I hate Facebook. Okay, here's one of the things I hate the most about Facebook. Although I do hate many, many things about Facebook. Many, many things. But here's the biggest thing. Is if you go to Facebook... You can't go back to where you were. They don't let you go back. They've got something programmed in there where they they don't let you go back to the page you were on. So if you don't remember what page you were on or whatever, ugh, so annoying. I just hate Facebook all around. Absolutely, I absolutely despise Facebook. I don't, I don't have, and I'm not, I, I'm not saying that. And I have Facebook. Like I do not have Facebook. Like I had. I quit Facebook how long ago? Over a year ago. Yeah. Like two falls ago? No. I quit it this fall. Like once election season started and I saw how hateful people were being to each other, I quit. Like that was enough. That that was the last straw for me. Yeah, and then I had one for card collects, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I got rid of my Facebook for card collects. I got rid of my Instagram. I got rid of, I still have a Twitter. I have my website, which I'm going to be updating because it's kind of trash right now. Like, not necessarily, the design's fine for what I do, my channel or whatever, but, like, just all around, like, there's way more I could do with it, and it's not the most secure website. Like, the marketplace is secure. Like, that's good. But the website itself is just not really secure. I, I don't feel comfortable with it. Like I want to do a better website. And that will also lead to like ad revenue and I don't know. Stuff like that. Facebook is for moms. Facebook is, is for moms. Yes. Oh, Taylor Horton Tucker. Yeah, okay. I'm a little slow. I'm kind of tired right now. I'm a little slow right now Taylor Horton Tucker okay yeah the goat I'll get out of here tuh it, it'd be tug goat tug goat not instead of lug goat be tug goat all right Shay Shay Facebook is for moms <laughs> good old book face oh 
I remember Facebook came out. I was still younger. Like I just got out of college. It was cool. It was kind of fun. I mean, it was really fun actually. And it just became this whole other thing. And now they like program it in to where they show you stuff that you hate. So you'll engage with it. It's crazy. Craziness. But yeah, Cam Newton tops Chrome is actually really rare. Nuts. Wait, that's ball over right shoulder refractor. Yeah. Yeah, that's the base. Base refractor. Wait, no. There's a regular one that has five PSA 10s. There's the ball over right shoulder, which I think that's the base one. That's like the most common one. It has nine PSA 10s. Wait. Mo, I'm looking at the wrong. 2011 is not his rookie year. I don't think. Maybe it is. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's just super low. That's why his PSA 10s go for so much. Yeah, Patriots went out and spent a bunch of money. But his stuff really hasn't gone up that much. I don't know. I really like Cam Newton as a play. want a refractor or an X-fractor. Here's a refractor PSA 9 that just sold for less than $159. And there are how many refractor PSA 9s? 23. 23. I don't, it's, that's the thing. I don't even think he has to do anything to justify way better prices than this. Like, that's, how are those so rare? I can see why the refractors are rare. But like his regular Topps Chrome, like, I don't understand that. Like, there's 37? Like, was nobody grading football cards? Here's nine. Wait. PSA 10 and 9s? That doesn't make sense. Nine. Okay, so there's a 10 refractor, 10 refractor, 10 refractor, 10 refractor, 10 purple, 10 black, mint 9 orange, mint 9 sepia. Oh, those are rare. It's hard to find sepias from back then. And mint nine black. Wow. So if the refractors are 500, there's two grand in refractors. The black should be actually a grand a piece for a 10. Let's say the purple 750. So that's 3250. The C, those others are rare. Say those are 200 a piece. And did like right now's market. So about 38 50, four grand, something like that. Would be what market price was going for. I think it's different now. There's a black out of 299 for 150 bucks. I mean, I know Cam Newton hasn't had the the best few couple years, but like he was very, very good for quite a while. Um Orange Refractor 9.5. I'm going to follow a couple of these. I want a Refractor of him. And if I can get them raw for a decent price, I think I can... What were they going for raw? They were going for like 50 bucks. There's an X Fractor went for 25 50 Oh yeah, there's two Refractors that went for 30 bucks. Crazy. So, I think they'll go for more now. But, I don't know. Maybe not. I'm going to follow some of these cheap ones and see if I can get in on them. Let's 
69 bucks for a BGS9 orange refractor. Maybe Beckett graded a lot more of these. Jason, see ya. Good old book face. You were five when it came out? You were five when it came out. Were you even... Oh, gosh. You were just being born when Bookface came out. Wow. You got 2,000 baseball rookie cards? Mr. Cantell, if you have 2,000 baseball rookie cards, you should probably definitely move them from Com C to Star Stock. Now, Com C is going to charge you some for shipping, but not much which is what's nice about them. It's going to take you about two months to get there and then two months to get in the system. But I definitely think it's worth it. Um, some of them will be B's, some of them will be C's. But considering ComC doesn't really charge you much for shipping, I don't think. And... Um, Star stock doesn't charge you anything for ingestion for bringing like putting the cards in the system. I think it's a pretty good play. Now, obviously, some of those cards are going to go up in that four month time period, and some of them are going to go down four or five month time period. Um, so you definitely, but you definitely want to make sure you're sitting in the right card. So let me let me go over that for a second because it can be confusing. If you go to frequently asked questions, this is all in the video, but I want I want to keep going through it because I don't want anybody to mess up anything. Um, here's a big part: insert cards. We're not currently accepting insert card submissions while we focus on getting the most par popular card types live on the site. So inserts are defined as any card that has a different card number from the base card and its parallels. NBA debut, NFL debut, and rookie debut are all considered insert cards. Insert cards, which are already live, can continue to be traded. So, for instance, I sent in a Bryce Harper, Harper rookie debut, and they held it, and I'll have to have that shipped back to me, right? Whatever. Um, not that big a deal, but... You can't send in rookie debuts anymore. Even though there's some on the site, you can't send in Mosaic NBA debut, NFL debut, rookie debut baseball, none of that. And with basketball, they accept a lot of different stuff, which they're regretting now because everybody sent their Donruss freaking Carson Edwards and uh, Mosaic everything to them. Now they have to deal with it. Hoops, they only accept graded now. Um, Prism Draft only graded now. Uh, Hoops Premium Stock only graded now. So they've they've that was that's different than it used to be. Um, MLB they only accept Bowman Chrome first. Bowman like Bowman, but Chrome first. They only they basically basically they all they only accept Bowman Chrome firsts. Whether they come out of Bowman, Chrome, or Draft, doesn't matter. The Chrome first is a Chrome first. Um, tops series, so Tops, all rookie cards. Tops update, all rookie cards, not rookie debuts, though. Keep that in mind. Tops Chrome, all rookie cards. Tops Heritage, all rookie cards. That probably won't last long, the Tops Heritage. Or the Tops Series 1. I sent them like 20 or 30, because they don't charge you anything to put them in the system. So, like, why not just send all of them? Like, just send all, no matter who it is. Um, and that's the problem I think they'll run into, and already are. Other Tops brands, only graded autos numbered rookies. The main thing I wanted to cover was only Bowman Chrome first. And this is all in raw form. And no rookie debuts. For, for you, for baseball. That's the main thing. No rookie debuts. Only Bowman Chrome first, but all Tops, Tops Update, Tops Chrome, and Tops Heritage rookies. And...
Connor, what are you talking about? Camera rhymes with scam. Get out of here. <laughs> Jesse, I want to see my homeboy play again. Never had been so excited for sports. I love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, get on that Chiefs train. Be doing that, that Arrowhead Stadium Tomahawk chop, baby. I wonder how... They won't be taking draft picks. Nope, no draft picks. I was telling somebody earlier. Oh, because Sir Charles sent me some draft picks. Some Prism draft picks stuff, which is awesome. Um, but I was saying that you really liked Prism draft picks. Doug, I suck at Starstock. Much better buying and selling from eBay for me personally. Okay. Um, I... I think there's some, just because a star stock's so new, there's a lot of inefficiencies in it. Like if I can buy a star stock A and they offer the grading and everything, um, if I can buy a star stock A for the same as a raw card on eBay, I just feel like that's a deal I can't pass up. I think there's a lot, there, there is value to a star stock A. It should be worth more than a raw card on eBay. Now I understand like a lot of raw cards on eBay vary depending on the condition, how good the photos are, the seller ranking, stuff like that. But just your average card, like you're not like most eBay sales, you're not going to trust them to be a PSA 10. Um, sometimes you get lucky, whatever. Most of them are not. Um, and most of the time, you're not going to trust them. With Starstock, it's a PSA 9 or 10. I feel like the, your average eBay sale is probably a PSA 7 or an 8. It's like more like a Starstock B. Um, whether they um, whether they call that out in the end description or not, it, you know, is up in the air. Um and once you get it, like it's a pain in the butt to send it to return it. So, you know, there's that. Chris Martin, they also stopped accepting complete set version. Yeah, I kind of think that's good. I don't necessarily like the complete set version. Like, I don't like that they have a different set. Like, I'm cool with factory sets big on factory sets I don't think they should be a different photo or a different like parallel type or that type of thing it's a factory set just make it a factory set in my IMO IMO in my opinion you know you know so anyways um Debating on getting a pink camo mosaic Jalen Hurts graded. Get it. Well, are you going to have it back before the beginning of the season? That's the question for me. Is because Jalen Hurts starting quarterback pretty much looks like Jalen Hurts starting quarterback. So there should be a run up on Jalen Hurts cards before the beginning of the season. Now, what his cards do from that point on it depends on how he plays. I don't know that I've seen enough of Jalen Hurts to be able to say how he's going to play in the regular season. Yeah. Yeah, they Chris, they needed to uh, limit a lot of the random cards on there because it's going to bog down their system. Like it's not that it's not that big a deal to like weed through them for me. You know, like if I go to the marketplace and I go to friggin' whoever, uh, Zion, you know, uh, friggin' 65 PSA 10 Zion Prism bases, or I guess 65 Prism Zions, 45 optics. Um, let's get down here into the really good stuff 87 mosaics 33 nba debuts that's actually less this is actually less than i thought there'd be let's go to tatis but yeah it's not that big a deal for me to wade through them 
it's more it's bogging down the system. 114 top series two Tatises. 366 cards in the vault. Total. Tops uh base tops Tatis is look like some crazy number. I think it's up to fifteen or sixteen thousand already. I think it's it's a high number. PSA tens. What's weird is that like on Starstock, they sh a lot of times they say top series one or top series two which is something that no one else in baseball cards really uses. Like it's just tops or tops update or tops Chrome. Like hardly anybody else will in baseball cards will ever delineate top series one or top series two. So, I mean, it's the star stock was set up by basketball guys. That's that's, and it was set up for basketball cards um, because that's what was hot last year. Uh, doesn't mean it won't develop into something big or like just not even something big, just something like that works. Like just something that works. Like just something that is a legitimate marketplace offers value to consumers. Like I think they do and that's good. Chris, PS, if the card was PSA 10 or 9, they wouldn't be selling on eBay. It would just create it themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm thinking maybe that will change with the new price increases. Like if you want it back in even six months, you're paying 50 bucks. You know? And that, that's really not even going to get it back in that amount of time. Like you're paying 100 bucks to get it back in 10 weeks. 150 bucks. So if you're talking about a card that's ten twenty dollars hopefully you'll be able to find more of those in a psa 10 on ebay people just aren't willing to wait or aren't willing to you know submit them jesse your best bet is to people who take like five pictures usually have good quality raw cards they're trying to highlight by being very detailed with pics yeah agreed I normally don't buy cards, ungraded cards, that don't have good quality pictures on a good quality background. I like rarely buy cards that have a white background because I can't see the white showing on the cards. Um, so I always put my cards on a black background, and I I usually only buy cards that are on a dark enough color background where I can see the condition pretty well. For sure. <clears throat> Let's see. Here. But yeah, I like Cam Newton as a play. Mainly because I feel like I still feel like baseball season will do well. I think next year's football season, I think people are into football cards bigger than what we think, maybe. Um, that I think that, that people like, there's a lot of people that have come in through football cards and with the basketball craze kind of died down, like now people are settling in, like baseball's taking off. There still are a lot of people jumping on the baseball bandwagon. Um, but a lot of people are settling into like, okay, now you have to actually work to make money. You can't just buy something and it automatically goes up in value. Like now you have to actually put in some amount of work. You know, which is kind of why I created this channel is because when I got on YouTube, it's like, it's like, there's nothing 
there just really wasn't very much that was teaching people how to go about finding cards in a regular market to make like the basics of like what creates value in cards and stuff. But yeah, now you've got people where people are either settling into the stuff they like or they're getting out. And that will probably continue as a cycle for a while, but that's a, I feel like that's a good thing. Um, but I do think there's a lot of people that have hit the football market that actually like it and appreciate it and will, um, and we'll carry over two words. Brandon Marsh. Is that um, Kyle's long lost brother from South Park? Just kidding. Who do you guys PC? Been hooked on game. Oh, Jesse. Uh, that's an awesome question. You know what? I'm just going to take that. You know what I'm going to do with that, Jesse Nunez? I'm going to take that. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to take it over here. I'm going to go to, let's just, we'll just put it in general chat. I'm going to, I'm going to paste it. I'm going to just paste it right there. That way we can continue that conversation. <laughs> I'm just giving you an example of like conversations that would be awesome to discuss in Discord. And then I'm going to reply. Reply to Jesse Nunez. Ichiro. Comma. Bam. Eddie Bio. Comma. Um... Hmm. I'm still developing cards at IPC. I'm such a skin flint. I'm just going to put them. Ichiro and Bam out of bio. It's hard for me to look around like the monetary aspect of cards. It's just, it's not my DNA. Not that money in, at all is everything about cards. Like, that's not why I enjoy it. It's just hard for me to disconnect the monetary aspect of collectibles and cards from the actual thing. Uh, do you think that Joe asked a great question? Do you think the female sports card market could blow up? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, just because I know there are female collectors out there, but I don't meet very many. You know, yes, you will see them at shows. You will see them at on YouTube, but. I don't meet very many. Look at Jesse posting that, that friggin' Lakers like bandwagon rider uh, goat symbol there. Um, but, you know, female, you know, I, I think what you're saying is like Cheryl Swoops and Venus Williams, Serena Williams, and, and uh, Danica Patrick. I, I mean, I still don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, here's the thing. Like, how many guys will actually collect those players? All right. And then how many women are actually investing, collecting in sports cards? And I feel like that number's always, the, the, the amount of guy both of those numbers, the amount of guys that are going to collect those players. Now they'll invest in them. Don't get me wrong. But collectors are what make up the floor of a market. Like that's what carries, makes things into a real thing and not just a fad. All right. So I don't think there's that many guys out there that actually collect or buy to hold 
would hold on to those cards if they were offered a decent amount. Like if they could make a decent amount of money on it, they're going to take it, right? Um, that's in nowadays. That's why I consider collecting somebody that's willing to hold on to something for a while. You know, whether it's about money, whether it's collecting, investing, those lines are all blurred. But are they willing to hold on to it for quite a while? Um, and then. You know, if that's not the case, you know, I, I would see females collectors as having more interest in female sports players. Um, are there, there aren't, like, I don't think there's that many female collectors. I mean, my channel is 98, 99% male. Um, so I don't know that that market can hold up. You know, sports cards in general is not going to last forever. You know, it's not, the market is going to go soft. It's going to dip. It's going to, it's not going to be solid forever. You know, there's going to be times of very little to no growth at all. If not like recession, receding prices. Um, yeah, female tennis, you know, you're seeing those, what is it, 2001? Uh, net, net pro cards, which the ones that really go for big money are the glossy, which I think were a special, like complete set version that are kind of hard to get right now. Um, those are the ones that really go for big money. Like I think there was a Serena Williams glossy net pro elite that went for like 16 grand or something, maybe more. Um, MSC, I love Discord. I do too, actually. I think it's a great way to communicate, Discord is. And now I know how to use Photoshop, so I can take this goat image. Oh, it's a GIF. Nice. Look at those eyes. Anyways, I can take that image of a goat and put a Kawhi Leonard, like... Kawhi Leonard's face on it or something like that. <laughs> Tops is about to release volleyball cards. Uh, like, I, it's, I mean, name a volleyball player. Like, I think I could probably name that one. Gabby uh, Reese. Gabby Reese. I'm pretty proud of that. Like, I pulled that out of the annals of history. <laughs> annals of history in my brain. Gabby Reese. Yep, that's the one volleyball player who I can name. And that's it. That's the only one. <laughs> so, I mean, I go ahead, I guess, but I don't think there'll ever be a... I don't think there'll be a market in this cycle of sports cards. 20 years from now, I mean, how much popularity does volleyball have? I mean, we're not talking about like Marvel, 1990 Marvel, or, you know, Mike Tyson, people that like right now we're seeing entertainment. Like I had that Jay-Z card. Like these are people and brands that are huge. Like they're new, like their increase in value is new to sports cards, but they're people and players and brands that are huge. You know, yeah, I don't think, I don't think volleyball cards are going to be a thing, but maybe I, I could be wrong. I definitely don't. Um, there is about one female per community. I have female viewers. I have females in chat. I pro I might pro I might have females in chat right now, and if so, I'm not meaning to insult anyone, like at all. And I think it's awesome that women. I hope more women come into the community. Um. But let's just be real; like there aren't very many. Um. But yeah. There are many subcultures very deep underground. It just had the base year ever. Volleyball? I don't know anything about volleyball. And I'm not I'm not trying to pretend like I do. I, I just like keeping this goat image just right here next to me. 
And that's that's how I, that's what I feel like you posted that for Jesse. So there's a World Cup volleyball like your school and me in volleyball. I feel like right now. Or. Yeah, the all the old upper deck went through the roof. What are we talking about right now? Low key, Jesse, that's what I'm talking about. Low key can't wait for the dip. Just be able to buy wax at stores or not paying absurd amounts for some stuff. Definitely trying to take advantage of this market that we're in. But at the same time, you know, I wouldn't be, unless I lost a bunch of money, I wouldn't be super unhappy to go back to the way things were. I just want to experience and take advantage and especially the shows and like meeting new people and, you know, new shops opening up and all that stuff. Like that's, that's what I'm happy about. But as far as like the craziness, that yeah, is what it is. Oh yeah. Trading cards for sure had the, the greatest year ever. Jesse, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna get on the the flippers Lakers train. Don't even try. Short vid, the Ozzy Smith rookie card auto. You posted an Ozzy Smith rookie card auto. People will go upside down on KD. People all over that at the Dallas card show. Same with the Messi and Ronaldo. But the, those may stay high because of soccer popularity. But too much KD noise. I don't know, Connor. I don't know. I don't know. This is all new territory. Yeah, I remember those days, Joe. When just like you would just go to the sport, like I would just go to the sports card section and have to talk myself out of buying anything. Cause I'm like, uh, like it's just, it's such a bad return on investment. Like, like it was just, I mean, back then, no matter what you bought baseball, football, or basketball, like you weren't pulling anything to make your money back most of the time. Like you could for sure. On a $20 blaster, you could for sure pull something to make your 20 bucks back. But you could definitely open a lot of blaster boxes and not pull anything. Yeah, PSA price up there is still not getting expressed done. Eh, we got to give them a little bit of time, John, to kind of, you know, they just implemented this new price hike. So see what happens from here and give them some time to catch up and stuff, you know. Everything's up. Gold, silver, stock market, sports cards. Yep. It's crazy. It's nuts. And and I've been, I kind of like, I talk, me and my mom talk every year about what she's going to do with her investments. And I, I mean, background, like I went to grad school for finance. Um, I don't do anything in finance now, but basically... You know, and I don't for a reason. That's because the finance markets are completely ridiculous, and like I have, I have no respect for them whatsoever. Like they're, I don't, I don't know how else to put it other than they're, they don't make any real active sense, and they're full of crooks. Like in principle, they make sense, but the way they're actually regulated, they make no sense and uh, no decent sense, and they're just they're run by crooks. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, we, I've been advising her for the last two or three years. Like you should like, just put everything in bonds, everything in guaranteed returns, because this is not sustainable. You cannot keep printing money on zero interest rate forever. Like, and when it comes crashing down, it, it will be bad. Like 2000, 1999 was bad. 2004, we hit a small recession. That was a little bit, probably a little bit worse. 2008 was way worse. Um, 
and it, the re and it, there's a reason these keep getting worse, and that's because we keep deferring inflation, right? So we we have a recession. In order to jump, instead of letting it run its course, we try to keep anything bad from happening so the corporations continue to make money. So what we do is we print a, sh a ton of money and we lower interest rates to keep inflation from going up. Because if you print a bunch of money and put it out there into the system, the natural course of things is for inflation to go up. But in order to counteract that, we drop interest rates. Well, we don't have any interest rate left to drop. And we're printing a bunch of money. And we have been. Like, for ever since 2008, we printed, like, an ungodly amount of money. Like, between, between 2008 and 2015, I think we printed, like, $15 trillion worth of, worth of new, like, debt basically like something insane and it just it can't like it's not it can't go on forever like we either have to have a serious like revolution in the american econ actual physical underlying economy where we are creating value at a rate that we haven't done in a long, long time. Or we're going to see some serious issues in, in the money markets. <laughs> MSC Ozzy Smith 101. Um, in eBay? All right. MSC saying, type in MSC. Oh, on YouTube. I for, Yeah, you have a channel. Hold on, dude. Sorry. I've, it's hard for me to keep up with everything. MSC Ozzy Smith 101. <sighs> Filter. Why is it not? Why are you not coming up? Space. MSC, I have never had any luck finding your channel. I'm sorry. I'm just MSC poop water. <laughs> just buy gold. Yes. No. Silver, right? Silver, because silver actually has a use to it. Nah. Um, just buy just buy and sell baseball cards. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your 401k will be doing good. Um, the last couple of years, but it's not because of like, and that's, that's great. I mean, if you're going to use the money now, but 
that's not because the actual economy is doing necessarily well. Um, it's for mainly because we have zero interest rate pretty much and we've been lending like corporations have been borrowing it's kind of off topic for the channel but corporations have been borrowing at staggering rates and now we're looking at corporate debt that i think 10 to 15 trillion in corporate debt um junk bonds and stuff like that like when like how corporations borrow money is they create bonds and then they sell them to individuals uh, with a interest rate attached, so coupon rate. So they, every so often, you know, you get a dividend basically from that bond. Um, but corporations have been allowed to just borrow extreme amounts of money so they're able to show they're able to use that money to invest in certain things for their business to make it look like they're make it look like to their shareholders that they're actually doing well when in reality they're just using debt to make it look that way and that's the big problem in the american economy is for instance if you work at a factory you're given a quota and if you know, if you don't produce, then your supervisor and his supervisor and his supervisor, they all get their ass eat out, right? You know, this on down the line. But the people that are actually responsible for the production, they're the ones that are eating people's ass for production. Like, that's the problem. Is like, there's no responsibility at the top. You know, and so it's all just about making things look good. Like the CEO is trying to make things look good for the shareholders. And they're doing it in unethical ways. Um, the people below him are trying to make themselves look good the, the, on down the line. It's just my opinion, but I definitely would not, uh, would not um, advise anyone to... Uh, to invest in just regular corporate stocks. Not even if you're young, not right now. Like the markers are too far off, way, way too far off. And they have been for a couple of years. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you're G like, yes, 401ks have done really well in the last two, three, four, five years. Um, if, you know, the market crashes, if and when I think the market crashes, um, it won't matter what they've done. If you haven't pulled that money out, you know, if you're not of the age of pulling that money out, then pretty much I would say all those gains, if not more, will be retracted from your 401k. Um, anyways, I'm not going to carry on with that. Just buy Mickey Mantle. That's what I'll say. Just buy Mickey Mantle. Can't go wrong. Mickey Mantle ne has never went down in value long term. Never. And there is an argument to be made that it had used invested $10,000 in the stock market in the 1970s or had you invested um, $10,000 in Hall of Fame player cards at that point in time, you would be much, much farther ahead, even with, you know, an 8 to 10% increase year over year in your $10,000 um, investment in the stock market. You would still be... Uh, way ahead in your $10,000 investment in Hall of Fame player cards. I mean, think of what you could have bought in the 1970s with $10,000. Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio's, Mickey Mantle rookies, all that stuff. All that and a bag of chips. 
Honus Wagner's and just everything. He would have done much better, but not, <clears throat> that was a very immature market. Had you known then what you know now, which you don't, you know, there was a lot more inefficiencies and holes in that market. <clears throat> Jesse, buying anything crazy with your stimulus check? Um, no, actually, I am not. I am, like I said, I'm selling stuff to come up with cash for a couple shows I've got coming up. And then my stimulus check is mainly going to go to paying off credit cards. I've got a couple credit cards that I need to pay down or pay off. And so I'm just going to put it towards that. Um, probably the best investment I could make right now. Guaranteed to save me 20%. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm not going to go, but I am going to take a break for just a minute. Maybe not even five minutes. I'll be right back. Um, I don't have one of those break things anymore I'm just gonna turn my cam off I'll be right back hang out if you want to go if you got to thanks for being here don't forget to use my eBay link it's the best way you can support the channel and it's free um, but yeah I'll be back in like five minutes make some coffee be right back
All right. I am back. Let me see here. Turn this on. Yeah, MSC. I'm tr like M S C. Filter channel. Oh, wait. Hold on. This is your, okay. I know I found your video last time we watched it. Hold on, let me let me try the Ozzy Smith. Part of the problem is YouTube. Dang it. You're going to have to send me a link to the video, I think. Or I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, crap. I've missed a bunch of uh, chat. Yeah, guys, I'm just, I'm, I'm very bearish on the stock market once it gets to, once companies get to where their prices are over 30 times earnings, I'm going to be very bearish. Um, it's just hard, it's hard to pay back that type of that type of pricing. Connor, I find shows through, um, like there's only a couple, like Beckett has a thing and then there's another one. So if I do card shows, Missouri, and there aren't a lot of card shows in Missouri. Um, Sports Collectors Digest has the most. There's this Machinist Hall show in St. Louis. Um, there's a couple other sites that show shows. Like I said, Beckett. Um, the Sports Collector Digest is usually the ones that the one that shows the most for my area, anyways. Um, but still it's Missouri and there's not, there's not a whole lot. Not bad though. More than like on here, at least Mississippi. So April 3rd, coach Ron Estes, he does a lot of shows around Missouri. He's got one April 10th. This one I'm planning on go to, going to April 10th, April 23rd through 25th in Springfield. That one I'm planning to go to. I might go to some of these other ones. And there's one that's not very far from me that's just not advertised very well. But they have one like, I think it's like the first week of every month. 
but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I think that's everybody, Chris, is just like the last year being home, I think people have been kind of depressed and one way to, uh, um, one way people try to combat that is by buying stuff and people have spent a lot of money. Yeah, Paul, um, it is pretty insane how cheap the, the really super like pre-war era cards are Goody and even those tobacco cards, like the Honus Wagner type cards. Um, I mean, you're talking like you can find hall of famers that just aren't that well known for just really stupid cheap prices. And it's just, there's not exposure, but even like, you know, you're spending 30 grand on a Luca blue wave or blue or whatever. Um, when you could buy, like a PSA three Mickey or a Babe Ruth, nineteen thirty four or thirty eight Goody for fifteen grand, or at least you could like a month or two ago. I think that stuff has gone up a little bit, but um, I feel like whenever we have these cycles of progression in uh, sports cards, like what we had in the nineties, like it starts with modern and it kind of works its way back. So, in 1990, you could buy a Mickey Mantle, like really high grade Mickey Mantle rookie card for like 1500 bucks, I think. And then, you know, by 2000, that PSA 10 Mickey Mantle went for 150 or 200 grand or something. Um, now that card's worth probably 20 million plus probably 20 million plus considering that PSA 9 went for 5 million um that PSA 10 should be somewhere around 15 20 million there's only 3 in existence um and one hasn't sold since 2001 but those same cards you could buy in 1990 for like i say 1500 maybe 10 grand and then there was one sold in 95, 96 for like a hundred grand or something. I think the last one that sold was like 200 grand in like, um, 2001. But I feel like it takes longer for the vintage stuff. And it's just people get into the hobby. They focus on the stuff they know, which is modern stuff. Pe people they can watch. And then if they stick around and they learn more, and they act on the knowledge they have, which is, um, which grows, you know, and their tastes become different. Uh, and they, they get back, they get more into more people get into vintage again and they see it as a better option long term and better investment. You know, I'm still probably going to say, your recent Hall of Famers are probably a better investment depending on which ones you get. Like, you know, I don't know about your, I don't know about your like 1980 or 1990 score Larry Walker or your 1990 tops Larry Walker. I don't know how those are going to do or your 1989 tops Randy Johnson. I mean, I think they'll do fine. I don't think they're going to go down in value. Um, but you know, I think your retired hall of famers have a higher upside, um, long-term than like maybe your, maybe your like Pete roses and stuff like that. I mean, we're seeing ridiculous. That sounds crazy. We're seeing ridiculous prices on like Pete Rose and Hank Aaron and and Mickey Mantle right now, but, um, there could be a lot of, a lot of leveling off, a lot of stagnation, especially in their lower grades. Like we're seeing ridiculous prices in like the PSA nines and the PSA tens. 
Um, I'm sure there's, I, I don't track it as much as I used to, but I'm sure there's been big increases in the lower grades as well. But I still think you're like more modern Hall of Fame players are probably long term, next 10, 20 years, are probably the ones that have have a, a bigger upside, maybe. Um, yeah, Joe Nobody, Paul, Joe Nobody, you know, Prism, PSA 10, 70 bucks, but a hundred year old card, $40. I'm not typing in MSC poop water promise. <laughs> Got lucky in January, picked up three Griffey Jr. PSA 8 and a couple Conseco PSA 9 just to revisit my past. That's a good idea. That was a good idea. I was looking at a Griffey PSA 8 or 9 for like some stupid cheap amount of money. I didn't buy it, and now it's gone up like 500% back around the same time. Actually, I think this was in December um, in Upper Deck Griffey. Rookie of the Year for basketball, I'm guessing, Jesse LaMelo. I think for sure LaMelo. He's going to get it. He's had a bigger impact. Outside of stats, he's just had a bigger impact on his team, on the league. Um, and stats-wise, like he's, he's done very, very well. Yeti, uh, you got five PSA 10 Tatis rookies. Um, so how much do you have in them? You don't know if you should hold or sell. How much do you have in them? And I mean, if I was you, you know, if you're if you're taking a profit, if you can take a profit, a decent profit, it's basically how much do you have in them? How much can you make off of them at this point in time? And what can you do with that money? Like, what's your opportunity cost? Like, do you have a plan for what you would do with that money? Um. <laughs> Kuzma, I think, has a high upside, Jesse. I think Kuzma getting into the playoffs, depending on how they do, I think I think Kuzma has a, a high upside. Oh, you think Anthony Edwards? Anthony Edwards scored 34 points the other night. Like, he started off slow, but if he continues putting up numbers like this in the second half of the season, then yeah, it's probably going to be Anthony Edwards. But LaMelo is for sure fun to watch. And uh, uh, LaMelo's 5000 in Vegas to win it. So that's a 5000 money line. So that's like put up 5000 to win 1000 or put up 5000 to win 100 or something like that, something crazy like that. You would be selling for fifty dollars more per card than you bought after fees and shipping, or before fees and shipping. Like if you're selling, like if you if you're feeling a little bit wary about it, like maybe sell two or three. You know, if it, I mean, I wouldn't want to hold. Depends on what you're coming. So you're saying you bought. I, I guess if they're base tops, you bought them around two fifty, something like that, um, or two hundred, I guess. Or if they're tops chrome, maybe around three hundred. Okay, so you'd make fifty bucks. So if I felt that kind of way, like I was unsure or something, I would definitely sell a couple of them. Um, kind of to, 
I here's the thing. People are gonna give Tatis somewhat of a pass going into this season. So yeah, there'll be a sell off probably um around right around the beginning of the season. I don't think it's gonna just like I, I don't think it's gonna crash the market by any means. Um so even if we have a decent sell off and even if Tatis starts off slow, people are going to give him a pass for at least a month, six weeks, something like that. Um, so, I mean, because if his cards start to dip, people are going to look at it as a buying opportunity, you know? Um, one thing I'd say about the base top Tatis is, is just that the the population number is so high on them. Yeah, it's 12,000 right now. So, you know, the Luca Prism is 16,000 and they're still over, you know, they're probably going for 1,500 right now. Um, the baseball market is not the basketball market. And I would never expect to see numbers like we see in basketball. And comparing base tops to Prism is probably not the right comparison. You'd probably want to compare Tops Chrome to Prism, regardless. Um, I feel like in a, I, I mean, if I felt that way, I would probably, I would probably sell a few of them and take take some profit. Um, you're taking probably, you know, twenty percent on a couple of them, two or three, four, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you know, and maybe you just, maybe you're just taking that money and, you know, doing something important with life. Or maybe, you know, if you've got something else that you're more interested in, <clears throat> like I'm selling and taking some smaller profits on stuff right now, uh, because I need that cash to go to shows with, because I feel like the profit potential from stuff I can pick up at shows is a lot higher um, than the stuff that I'm, you know, take my profits here. I need the cash to go to shows. That's where I'm really going to make money is at the shows and, you know, try to pick up some stuff that I, like I say, I can turn around, and put on eBay and make, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% in a fairly short amount of time. Oh, Jesse, LeGoat's about to get another triple-double. Well, didn't you watch Skip Bayless? LeGoat's a ch stat chaser. Ridiculous stat chaser. Trenton had your horse. Trenton, thanks for being here. Hey, just started collecting. What would you say your number one don't do this would be? Um, there's several. Maybe that's a good video idea. Number one, don't expect every card. Like, don't expect the cards you get off eBay to be gradable. Like, definitely do your research and, you know, look at the cards you're buying for condition. Condition's pretty much everything when it comes to cards. When you're starting out, um, you know, that's something to definitely learn about. Uh, don't spend more money than what you can afford to, to lose. Now, when I, I say that, cards aren't, something that's going to go to zero normal. Like I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Um, you can, you know, but you can lose money. So don't, in, don't invest more than 
than you feel comfortable with, right? So don't don't put more don't put so much money in that it's like bothering you every day. Like it should be fun. You should collect what you enjoy and also it's better off if you collect sports or 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 um subjects topics that you enjoy. Um I would say number number one would be don't put more money in than than you feel comfortable with. Don't f- don't put so much money in that you feel like you have to be checking prices every day. That's just not <clears throat> it just creates too much stress. Jesse, skip, star, just listen to Shay Shay. Skip create, skip's a goat. Skip created the argumentative form of sports uh, conversation. That's straight out of the words of the, of, of Shay Shay. All right. So don't be, don't be dissing on Skip. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, definitely don't expect that that's another good rule. So Christopher Martin said don't overpay for retail or resale. Um that's that's a good rule right there in general is just like unopened product has overall on average a terrible return on investment. Like, if you spend $1,000 on an unopened uh, packs or boxes or whatever, like, your return on investment after you take the cards that are sellable and sell them might be $300. Um, like, that's probably closer to average. I did a breakdown on 2018 Prism for what it was selling for. And the best I could come up with, and I tried, like I tried to make it liberal towards 2018 Prism once I started seeing how bad it was going to be, the best I could do, and that was if you took and got everything graded you could, sold, went through all the work of selling everything, was about 50% for what it was selling for, which was like $5,000 for a hobby box. There's just a lot of things that go into it, but definitely definitely uh don't like if you're gonna open product do it for fun because there's normally not any money in it um you're not gonna make any money off of it so you see these guys on youtube or whatever doing pack openings and box openings and stuff like that and pulling these big cards well you know they're opening a lot a lot so yes they're gonna pull some big cards but even that, like if you actually look at the prices of those big cards that they're pulling and then look at the prices, the the, the cost of that product, if you were to go and buy it, um, you're not coming, you're still probably not coming close to come to being ahead. Joe Coke, 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 like the Coke brothers, Joe Coke, our breaks a good investment. Never. Never. <laughs> They're never a good investment. No. Retail product in general is a terrible investment, modern retail product. Um, but I I would definitely and even as I would do breaks, but I would definitely tell you right now that retail product is not a good investment. On average, your return on investment is very low. Adding on the cost of breaks. Uh, makes it even worse. So like the reason to get into breaks, you know, people do it for the community aspect. They do it for fun. You know, they do it because you can get certain, only cards of certain teams or certain, um, certain teams. Um, it's a mo- much lower price to entry, like cost of entry. So instead of spending a thousand dollars on a hobby box, maybe you spend 
fifty dollars on a break spot. You know, thirty teams that ends up being fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, the breaker can pay for shipping and pay themselves a little bit. Um, because honestly, like even first class, regular first class with no insurance or anything, you're just with tracking, like you're looking at five bucks a piece on 30 spots, you know, it's 150 bucks right there. Um, if I do breaks, I'm going to try to get them broke down into 10 spots if I can, um, to reduce the shipping cost and, I'm not going to charge a whole lot for it, but if I do them, but that would only be if I had a, a viewer base that actually wanted to do them and understood that this is not an awesome return on investment. It's fun. It's an opportunity to get into some cool stuff without the overall cost of, of, of spending a bunch of money on an open product, but no, it's not. It's not. I will tell you straight up. It is not a good investment. Did I shut the super off? I didn't shut it off. Um, it should be. Um, it should be. Uh, I did create this as a monetized uh, stream. So I did not shut it off. Um, but I, and I appreciate you, uh, considering it. That's awesome. Uh, Paul D I literally crushed it with 2019 Bowman Chrome, but I think I just got lucky. I agree with everything you're saying. Jet, Jesse, retail is just my outlet to get a junkie fix. As long as you go in not expecting, you'll be fine. Hey, don't get me wrong. Retail's a ton, of, like, opening products, a ton of fun. And it, it's worth it, but it's nor, normally not, um, normally not a good return. Christopher Martin, I've been lucky breaking from Jab's family for high-end products. He does by the box or half box usually, which is in my price range. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've seen him do that. Um, and that's good. And he does a lot of baseball, which is a lot cheaper. Uh, MSC, I don't open that much, yeah. I, I don't open that much for myself. One of the great things about having this channel is that, you know, I am able to justify uh opening some stuff um for the channel uh if i can find it but i haven't really found anything lately um <laughs> jesse's still over there on skip bayless <laughs> i honestly think modern base is overpriced yeah yeah, they're creating a ton of it. It's it's definitely they like almost say it's not a junk wax like production era numbers and it's not, but you know, junk era cards are still lower PSA ten pop numbers than modern cards. So it's kind of worse than the junk wax era. Um because now like the currency is PSA tens, PSA graded cards, so you know, if you want to go off of population, production numbers is PSA 10s. That's your population number. It's not how many cards are produced. It's how many are gradable in today's sports card hobby. Um, not that I'm a big proponent of raw cards. I'm a big proponent of lower grade cards. <clears throat> and I am planning a video on that, hopefully to be out by the end of the week, if not Saturday. Um, but... Yeah, um, yeah, modern brace base is probably, probably overpriced. Paul D getting breaks for fun, taking Toronto, doing very well, getting some nice cards for my $15 with shipping. That's awesome. And a lot of people, a lot of breaks starting out, like people that are breaking, like they won't charge anything on top of like the cost of product and shipping. Uh, what bothers me is like some of the bigger breakers, like, um, 
the really big ones like they charge like they have the economies of scale where and they have the purchasing power with the distributors you know they're they're charging retail prices which they're not paying and then charging a pretty hefty sum on top of that and I thought about doing a video, but I don't really like doing negative videos. But I will say that some of the biggest breakers charge the most on average. I mean, they have some that are more more in line as far as like, you know, I don't go off of what you can pull out of there. I go off of, okay, this is a retail cost. Okay, this is how many spots you have. This is your shipping cost. This is how much you're adding on top. It's how long it takes you. So like I saw somebody doing a, a case of immaculate, a bo five box case of immaculate. It was a break for, what was it? It was 30 spots and it was like something crazy. I mean, I know it was like over 10 grand. So it was like $350 a spot. Yeah, that was it. It was like 10500 is what they were bringing in on the break. Those boxes resell on eBay were reselling at 1800 So that's nine grand. All right, so they're $1,500. That's not that big a deal. But they're buying them wholesale for probably twelve hundred or less. Um, by the case, they were buying them probably twelve hundred, maybe fifteen. If it's fifteen, that's seventy five hundred dollars. You know, that's three grand for a break. You know, you're talking five boxes that have ten cards in them, eight cards in them a piece. A break that takes in thirty minutes, forty five minutes. And they're, even if they're charging $1,500 on top of that break, you know, $150 in shipping, no. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, and they're not charging $1,500. They're charging, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't get those that case for $1,000 a box. You know, but I would say $1,200, $1,500 at most, you know, so they're charging at least three grand for a break that takes 45 minutes. And you've got economies of scale. So you have people whose sole job it is is to sort those cards and pack them and ship them. You know, you maybe have two, three hours of labor in the whole thing. That's just like, that's ridiculous to me. Uh, Jesse, you should start opening more stuff for vids. You get money back from ads if you go negative on the pulls. Watching people open is always entertaining. I I mean, people, you know, if I could find stuff, I would. I just, I, it's really hard. I, like, I will open more stuff. Um, I just haven't, I guess I just haven't been interested in paying the money to buy it. It's the whole thing, and I can't find anything retail. Um, I don't get much from ads. I don't. Like, I, I mean, if that video was over eight minutes and it got 10,000 views, I would make about 50 bucks on it. So yeah, I would, if it got 10,000 views, which for this channel is, is quite a bit, you know, for right now for a break video, I'm not really known for break videos. Um, but I, I definitely consider it. I definitely want to open more stuff. It's just we're going to have to grow into that. Paul D. Definitely on the train of flipping anything modern, picking up Hank Aaron or 7th or 8th year Mickey Mantle or anything vintage. That's some stuff I want to pick up. Like I'm I'm just... I'm in the mentality of just trying to take advantage of this uh, modern market, basically. Um, build that up. Like... As soon as I sell something, like I've I've always got something that I want to go into it with, take into it with, and just keep building up that capital. Um, at some point, yeah, like I I want to pick up some 
some vintage stuff. Like I say, my, my biggest, my, like I have a big collection of 1971 Topps baseball. That is where most of my money lies in my collection. It's done really well. Trenton Hedgerhorst. Can you tell me what a break is? <clears throat> so a break is when, so like say I will buy a box of cards, a box of packs of cards. And let's say it's baseball. There's 30 teams. Um, I will sell spots for that break. It can either be random or it can be pick your team. Uh, on the pick your teams, more popular teams will go for more money. Less popular teams go for less money. But you buy into the break for a pack or a certain team, you know, and, you know, you split that cost up over the box, over that box of cards. And, uh, and then, you know, I, you know, in, in that scenario, I would open them on camera and try to provide as much entertainment value as possible. Um, and then ship them to you. That's a break. All right. So, um, you know, you, you can do, you can pull some big cards. You can do really well, but you know, all, all the numbers I've ever run show that retail product is, is normally not, not a, not a profitable investment and, and adding, you know, fees and the cost of, you know, anything for the person breaking is, uh, you know, makes it even on average, even less, you know, less profitable, but a lot of people like it. A lot of people like it for it's fun. It's an opportunity to be able to get into product that you can't, if you hit it at the right time, it can be probably like, I was looking for Bowman breaks, a Bowman Chrome, uh, breaks in, in January because I felt like baseball was going to do really well this year. I thought with baseball products still being around retail price, um, getting into some breaks would be a good idea. And I wish I had got into some because with the increase in the value, like the price of cards, uh, baseball cards, you know, it would have turned out to be probably overall, a, a good investment, but that's because, you know, you're, you're looking at, you know, some players going up four or 500% over the last couple months. Oh, everybody already explained that. That's fun. That's funny. MSC cases are fun. Cases are fun because normally every product has a case break. It's like one card that like you're pretty much guaranteed to get in a full case, in an open case. So that's cool. Christopher Martin, I'm sitting on a Tatis Donner rookie I pulled from a break that is packed fresh. I think that the Panini Baseball might get a boost this year. I mean, they're unlicensed, which is tough. But, you know, a lot of people carrying over from basketball and football, you know, I can't see it going any lower. You know, hopefully it, you know, gets gets a little bit of a boost. Paul D got a red mojo for 99 bucks. That's cool. Yeah. Once these breaker once the breakers are established. Now I will say, like I covered some some other guys. Buck City breaks. Uh, I looked into Buck City breaks and um Mikey B cards. The the guys that they try to be like they try to be as economic as po economical as possible and they understand, you know, like Mikey B's like they they're they do the best they can to make it as economical as possible for people. And like Mikey B, like he'll go on, like he might open two, three times a week and he will open for six, eight hours, you know? So 
you know, he knows over that course of time, his community is going to, you know, the percentage that he makes is going to add up and they'll be able to pay for everything and make a decent, you know, profit on it. But that takes a long time to grow that community. A lot of work, a lot of effort to grow that community. So, you know, the man should be compensated in some way for, you know, for putting in all that work in the beginning. Um, but I, I do think the numbers that I've run on, on those two guys, they, they, it does seem like they do is the best they can to try to be economical. Of course you have to add fees and you have to pay yourself something. Um, but I do think they, they, uh, they do the best they can to try to try to make it ep- economical. Sure. I mean, like Jab's family, you know, Stryker and all those guys, I'm sure they do too. You know, um, they have big YouTube channels and, and I'm sure they, they try to make it as economical as possible. Um, but some of these big break companies, oh my gosh, like they're just unscrupulous. In my opinion, like if you're, you know, if you're paying yourself three grand to do something that takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then, you know, total, you have maybe three man hours in the whole thing. Like, get out of Dodge. Like, no. Like, get over yourself, basically, is the way I look at that. I would like to do vintage breaks. Vintage junk wax is always fun. Christopher Martin. I would like to do uh, some vintage breaks. You know, I have identified some stuff in the past that was a really good return on investment. Now, that's very rare that I'm able to do that, but I have identified some. And, you know, not that that, if I was to do breaks, that's all I would do because it's just hard to find those opportunities. Or that all I would do would be vintage because I like opening a new product and I'm sure there's other people that do too. But, um... But yeah, I would like to do some vintage. Paul D. That's cool. When I was in my early 20s, I was painfully shy. I got into sports cards in the 1990s. And once I got a table at the flea market, I became a chatterbox. That is awesome. That is awesome. That's, that is, that's an awesome story. And it, uh, that's why, like, yeah, I'm always saying, I mean it, is like, I created this channel because there, I felt like there was a lot of people getting into the sports card hobby and there wasn't a lot of good guidance out there. And so from the beginning, that's what I've always said. And I, and that's my intention is to try to provide value to people so that they'll make not just not make bad investments, but make good decisions when it comes to sports cards. And that will lead to us having a better community, having more people in the hobby. Because it's the best hobby in the world, in my opinion. Like, there is none better. And and really, all those years where there wasn't a lot of attention, like selling, buying and selling on eBay, and still is, but was more just like the easiest thing and the people you would deal with at shows and, and different things. It was just, it, it was, it was a very enjoyable club to belong to. Not that it's not now. It definitely is. Um, there have been hiccups. A lot of the guys that have been in it for a long time are very stressed from all the changes that have happened in the last year. And, you know, it, it that kind of bothers me. Like if I go to a shop that I've gone to for a long time and, you know, you're just not getting the same, like you're not, you know, it's like seeing a friend of yours struggle. Like it sucks because you know what they're going through and why they're going through it. And there's just, I mean, they're making money, but you know, it just sucks because you can't just relax and you know, just hang out and, and look at cards and talk about sports and stuff like that. 
there's there's just so much going on. But like I said, you gotta look at the bright side and adapt or die, basically. Brad Pitt from Moneyball. And uh and try to make the best of the market as you can. Jesse Nunes, ninety nine career triple doubles for the GOAT. You talking about Russell Westbrook? Oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Connor. That is a good box break. I I should be getting a a, a few of those cards back. <clears throat> I actually opened Oh, that's me, Trenton. I'm Nathan. <laughs> uh um I should be getting that Michael Jordan and two of those Dirk Nowitzkis. I opened two of those boxes. One of them I opened off stream. I had eight hundred dollars in both of them. I had three hundred and one box. They went from three hundred to eight hundred dollars in a matter of about a week. Like I had been watching them at like two fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars for like two or three months. <clears throat> and I always had money in different places. And at the time that I was able to buy one, because they weren't coming up that often, I never had two or three hundred dollars. <laughs> To, to put, like, I never felt comfortable putting $300 in, even though I knew the return was crazy on them. Like, I'd done all the homework, and I knew that if, like, even if 90% of them came back and were ungradable, you still were going to make your money back plus some. Um, but I did end up buying two boxes. One I got at $300. One I got at $500. I had $800 in total in the two boxes. And so... Basically, uh, and I have, I had uh, those three that I felt like could, um, had a good chance at nine or ten. Uh, those three, um, those two Dirk Nowitzkis and uh, that Jordan. And then I've got all this other stuff that I need to send in, but that I don't want, like I sent those in at 75 bucks a piece. Um, and I sent an Allen Iverson rookie too, that, uh, I felt pretty confident about. So I should be getting those back within the next couple of weeks. So got all my stuff that I still want to send to grading. Yeah. So, all this dirt, because even a PSA eight dirt goes for a hundred bucks. Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Vince Carter kickstart. I didn't get any Paul Pierce. They all were off center bad, bad enough that I won't grade them. I wouldn't grade them. I actually sold them overall on eBay. Um. Vince Carter, Vince Carter. So I had like six Vince Carters that I feel like are probably in the PSA 8 to P out of those two boxes to PSA 10 range. That's crazy. I didn't realize. Six plus a kickstart Vince Carter. These actually sell well um, because he's one of the, I think he's the only rookie that was in this kickstart. Um, I can't remember what these do in a PSA 10. But then I've also got like all my Ray Allens and Allen Iversons and all this stuff has to go at some level. I, I really wish uh, I could send uh, this stuff through Starstock, but I can't. Ray Allens, Kevin Garnett. I really want to get these back. These are in good shape. Then they're the metal. Like they're upper deck SP, but they're like the metal foil, like type. Um, and if they were able to tin, that would be friggin' awesome. I don't know. I mean, you never know with stuff like that. But they are in super good condition. I just got lucky. I probably don't have five bucks a piece in these cards. Uh, a couple Shaq rookies. 
I've still got a box of this 92 archives. I also did a, an opening on that. Um, those openings are fun, but until you build up a customer base that, that looks for those, um, or a, a viewer base that looks for those, um, it's hard to get views on them. Is basically like, and, and my channel is kind of spread thin. Like I do that on, like I do different topics on purpose. Cause I feel like, uh, it's what I enjoy and, and like, it's a good kind of mix. So in a way people know what to expect, but, um, so this is the stuff basically that, that I'm going to PSA with everything else for the most part, I, I shipped off to star stock, like anything basically that I had that would, uh, that I could go to star stock with already went, I've got one of these out at grading. And I've got a couple more somewhere. Um, I'm probably going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I don't want to wait a year on these, but I don't want to spend a hundred bucks either. I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see what the turnaround, if anything happens with the turnaround times. Now I know like anybody you talk to is going to say the same thing. Like turnaround times aren't going to get any better. Uh, but I mean, they almost have to, I feel like. And with them increasing the prices, like people aren't going to not use PSA. But, you know, if I could, like, say, hold on here. Let's go to. Okay, so if I could turn it right now, economy suspended. But if I could get economy for $50 a card. If I could spend $50 a card and get those cards back in, say, three months, I'm cool with that. Um, that's what I would like to see. You know, but we'll see. Maybe the, maybe the price of these in a higher grade goes up. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of waiting right now. Kind of send that stuff through Starstock. I've got a couple submissions coming back. Um, I'm probably I'm probably gonna pick out some stuff to go. Like I think this is the one. Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. It's got a couple Vince Carters that I don't expect to get a ten on. Like they'll either nine or eight. It's got a couple Ray Allens that I think basically the same. They'll either eight or nine. They probably won't ten. Um, they won't ten. Uh, these two Kevin Garnett's, these two Shaq's, and this Jordan. Which these actually are going crazy. Just these regular archives, Jordans in a PSA ten were like a thousand bucks. They're going for like a thousand bucks. This is basically my one. I'm going to send off at twenty dollar level, at the twenty dollar collectors club level. Ten cards. So now you can send off ten cards. I'm going to send this off. This will be my next submission. Uh, I'll just send 10 cards a month at that 20 card level at $20 level. And then, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with, with the stuff that, you know, I want back, but I don't want to wait a year on. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that stuff. These two here, um, I might send it the hundred dollar level. Like right now we're looking at with the hundred dollar level, where is the turnaround times? So the hundred dollar is the regular and the regular is complete up to January 6th. So with these, I think the Allen Iversons are going for eight, 900 bucks in a PSA 10 and a few hundred bucks in a PSA nine. This Ray Allen NBA at 50, um, is they're way undervalued. The, the NBA at fifties are super rare. Um, they're 33 times more rare than the base cards. And it's much tougher to get a PSA 10 cause they're full foil cards. But 
so so basically I wouldn't plan on selling that card right away. Um, I don't I think it's dumb to like be in a hurry to get back cards that you don't plan on selling right away. But at the same time, like like I don't I don't want to like I want them back. Like I want to see what I get on them. I want them back. And just have that set aside. If I need the money, I can I can sell them or whatever. The Ray Allens, I really don't want to. These are card saver ones, Connor. I would always recommend card card saver ones. Um, they're bigger. They're easier to get cards in and out. Less chance of like damage in a card. And it is a little tricky, especially when you first start off using these. Um, it's a little tricky. So um, I would recommend getting card saver ones. There's a link down in the description, just an eBay link. Um, they're getting more expensive because they're harder to get, but they're still fairly cheap. I don't know, 30 cents a piece or something like that. <laughs> oh, my HGA sub? I've got that up here, too. It's basically all my modern cards. If I can't get those into HGA, I'm just going to send them to Starstock. I've got a bunch more cards, too, that can't go to Starstock. They'll go on a 20-day submission, most of them. So, these are all, like, capable of going to Starstock. Darius Garland, Fast Break Silver. That's not, that's not going to HGA. It just won't label right. Like, this one I was planning on sending to HGA. This Kelton Johnson, Reactive Blue. And this Ja Morant. Um, probably try to do a, maybe a blue and green I don't know with that one that one's tough but those are the ones I was planning on sending to HEA if I can get in on a submission so maybe Friday I'll try to get in it's tough because I work nights so if I work Thursday night um, I think their submissions are in the evening and I'm usually asleep um, in that at that time <clears throat> especially on day I get off for the weekend but those are the ones I've got. I still want to send them HGA, but I've I've just I've got them set aside with my star stock stuff because they do qualify as <coughs> star stock. If actually this one doesn't, this Trey Young doesn't because it's hoops. They only take graded hoops cards now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Bruce Star Gatterall Gold. I think this got a good chance to ten. Um, but here's the thing. If I send them to Starstock and then I use the $30, like I can send them to Starstock if they're still getting them back in two months. So it takes me two months to get them in the system, but, and then I have to wait for the next time they're submitting. So maybe that's three months before I can get a submission out, but it costs me $30. I get them back in two months. I'm paying $30 to get them back total in five months like that's still way better than anything PSA can offer to the individual <clears throat> and then like stuff like this like this Tatis rookie uh, can't go to star stock because it's stadium club uh, this Eloy purple can't go to star stock because it's Bowman Chrome rookie card they only take Bowman Chrome first Freddie Freeman, I like that card. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry guys, throat's really dry. That'll probably go in a $20 just year long thing. I don't expect Freddie Freeman to just disappear off the map anytime soon. And if he does, $20 isn't that much to lose out on. Uh, 
Griffey, another Ichiro that's in a little worse condition. These are all, there's an Ortiz Bowman, David Ortiz Bowman. A-Rod, Deion Sanders. These are all like, maybe I'll send them, maybe I won't someday. There's a Barry that's pretty well centered. I think it's got a shot. There's an 86 Blurry. These are all going on $20 probably. There's a 90 score Bo Jackson. Not a lot of money in that, especially if it doesn't come back a 10, but no, I'm all right with that. I just like to have it. Another one, McGuire, um, that I think could 10, but you know, not a lot of money in that, but I'd like to have it. So those will probably go out and I'll like, like I said, the $20 wait a year. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the turnaround gets better between now and then. I don't even remember how I sorted all this stuff. Oh yeah, here's basketball stuff that'll probably go on a $20. So a Bradley Beal rookie, a uh, Tim Duncan gold label from that break. This is other stuff. Ray Allen kickstart from that break that's off center top to bottom, but I want it in a, I want it graded to have. Tim Duncan kickstart that's pretty well centered, little off top to bottom maybe. I don't know. I think the top to bottom is a little different on these. Like it looks thick, but actually like it's, it makes sense when you look at the bottom. Like it's not like the name's really low here. Um, it looks thick on top. And I do think that Ray Allen's a little off top to bottom. Like it's a little low, but that Tim Duncan, I think is pretty, pretty slick. These are full foil cards. They're going to be hard to 10. So basically your only tens right now are going to be coming from my open boxes. Barkley black label. Barkley, I think has room to grow. Barkley archives. Uh, Deion Sanders, NFL pro set 89. That's a good one. Jesse, you're pretty optimistic about them keeping that two month turnaround. Um, I don't know that I am. It's just from what I've seen, like I'm going to act in that way. Here's the way I feel about that two month turnaround. I feel like star stock has a lot of pull, not just because they're submitting a lot of cards, which they probably are submitting a lot of cards to PSA. Um, I do feel like they have some pull because they're submitting a lot of cards. I feel like they have some pull because they're submitting a lot of cards that have already been looked over a couple times. Um, but also because they're just like, they have a lot of big name investors. Um, they have a lot of clout, so to speak. I don't know, just all around. Like I'm going to act as if it's still going to, it's going to hold up. Oh yeah. 86 Conseco Donruss. Um, yeah, I've got... Yeah, I've got an 86 Donruss Conseco that I feel pretty comfortable about. These are really hard to get to 10, but that's the best one like I've got, I could find. Um, off, off left to right. Probably not going to 10. A little bit crooked. A little bit cockeyed. I think it looks... I don't know. Like, for some reason in the camera, like, it looks way off. Like, to the left. Yeah, I guess it is. It doesn't look so much in person as far off. Maybe... I think it's somewhat of a... But then I've got a top traded Conseco too. Another one, really hard to 10. And if they get a nine, they're not worth that much. Um, but pretty clean, pretty clean example. I actually sent, I think I sent, yeah, I sent a Barry tops traded with a like uh, four month, five month um, economy basically uh, through a uh, third party submitter through card collector too. But yeah. <clears throat> you got an eight for thirty dollars and two nines for seventy dollars each last year. That's pretty good. That's your favorite card that can say go. Yeah. 
I still like the 80s stuff a lot. I've got, that's the other, right now on that four to five month, I've got an 80 flare, 84 flare update Clemens, an 84 flare update uh, Puckett. They're both were really good condition, I thought, sending them in. An 86 tops traded Barry. I think I have an Ichiro that I sent with that. And I sent five cards. I've got them on my computer. Let me look them up. What else did I send? I honestly don't remember. I should, but I don't remember. And I should have it here. So here's the cards. Hold on. Here's the cards that I sent in my four day that Iverson which it looks a little off right to left but if you look at the ball here from what I can see from comparisons of other PSA 10s that's what they go off of is the edge of this ball not necessarily the border which whether that makes sense or not, I don't know, but that's the way it looked to me from other PSA 10s. So I've got that one. This Jordan from the video, which is clean. Like is you got a pretty good separation here and here, pretty even. That corner in this picture might look a little weird, but it's that's a really clean card. I think that's got a good shot. The Dirks, maybe not a 10. Like, honestly, yeah, it's off top to bottom. Like, I think it's got a good chance at a 9, and I think those are going for around 300 apiece. Something like that. Yeah, that one too. Probably a 9. Might be able to get a 10 out of them. Maybe. Doubt it. Everything else is basically perfect on them. Which is odd for those because normally you have a lot of chipping, corner issues. I think it'll. I think they've got a good shot at a nine. I don't think. I don't think they'll get an eight. But maybe you never know. Huh. But where was? I guess I didn't keep my other. I guess I didn't keep my other submission. Thought I did. Here's a bunch of my 1971 stuff. Like different checklists of different grade sets. That's all stuff I've posted on eBay. Weird. That's weird. Yeah, I thought I kept kept good track. I know. Well, anyways, wait, 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 wait. I've got a video of that, and I took a video of it. Yep, 
Here we go. Yep, Ichiro. Oh yeah, I sent a Bill Belichick uh, pro set in the cleanest one I could find. Those go pretty well. So that Ichiro, which isn't the centering is not perfect on it, but everything else is really clean on that card. Yeah, and then I sent. Bill Belichick, you know, Phil Pro set rookie, which you wouldn't think a coach card, but that card's in the top of the deck of 91 NFL Pro set, and it's just cheap ink, and like the edges are always messed up. So if you get one in a PSA 10, they're worth pretty good money. They were selling around 600. They're, I don't know, maybe more, maybe less. There again, that's that Barry Bonds top traded. Really clean, really well centered card. And then uh, Kirby Puckett, Flare Update. Couldn't be happier with those. Now, these all came out of, like that came out of an unopened uh, set that my dad had. Not unopened, it was open, but it came out of a complete set that my dad had. Um, same with the top straighted, which is really odd. Either one of those that they would have really good centering uh, and not edge issues because a lot of them had deckled edge, like rough cut. But it was a gift, gift from my father. So however they do, that's how, how they will do. But that is those. Well, everybody, I think I'm going to call it. I'm a little tired. But I really, really, truly appreciate y'all being here. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue to... We'll, uh, we'll revisit the Discord um, when we do live chats. And we'll just do that for a while. Um, feel, you know, uh, use it. Um, I'll post some stuff on there and kind of when I come across eBay listings, I think are interesting. I'll put on there just different stuff and, uh, and hopefully, hopefully that grows into something valuable. Um, uh, I'm going to go, go watch some Clippers highlights and, uh, probably get some sleep. But, uh, of course, Trenton, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thanks for being here. Thank you, thank you everybody, for being here. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll catch you all, catch you on the next one. I'll try to have that PSA 9 video out. Mm. I'd like to have it out by Thursday, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be Friday, maybe Saturday before I get it out, so just get out when I can. But thank you all very much.